We are live here on YouTube, College Football Now by Chat Sports. Harrison Graham and James Yoder in the final college football playoff rankings will be revealed sometime in the next 15, 30 minutes, whenever, as Yoder would like to say, Condoleezza Rice and, and company decide to reveal their final rankings to us. But once they tell us, we will get those rankings to you. We are also live on the Michigan Football Report as the Wolverines took care of business. James? Uh, looks like your squad's going to be in the college football playoff. Yeah, they will be, Harrison. And if not for SEC bias, they should be ranked number one in the country <laughs> right now. But I think most people expect Alabama to get number one and to allow for there not to be a back-to-back -back rematch for Alabama sure. and Georgia to face off again. So that's where we're at. Looks like it'll potentially be Michigan versus Cincinnati, but we're going to all find out where it shakes up here in the next 20 minutes or so, Harrison. Exciting stuff for Michigan fans. Thank you for all of us watching Michigan Football Report, also simulcasting live on there. Yeah, and we'll uh, we'll break all that down, uh, what we think it's going to end up being. But first, we'll let the audience build up a little bit. Shout out your city. Let us know where you guys are watching from. We already got 200 people l watching live on Chat Sports. How many we got over there on the uh, Michigan Ooh, Football where Report? We got 120 right now. Okay. Yeah. So over 300 combined. We can get that audience up here. Uh, get active in the live chat. Uh, the more you guys comment, the more college football fans get in here, and it makes it a whole lot of fun as we get closer and closer to the college football playoff ranking reveal, hopefully in the next 20 minutes or so. Rashard Lee is in Dallas. Jordan is also in Dallas. That's what's up. That's where we are, the chat sports studios. Uh, let's see. Connor and Jake says Detroit. Uh, Kevin's in Ann Arbor. Go subscribe to the Michigan Football Report. Mm -hmm. uh, B uh, Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, I'm waiting for the guy who's been calling me a Bama hater for weeks to emerge. John is in there. John, let me just say this. While Bama didn't play their A game most of the season, I will never doubt your squad again. That was a beatdown in the SEC championship Let me give a game. Few of these uh, Michigan shoutouts here. So you got Lansing, Michigan from Cam. Trace Payne says Belleville, Michigan, baby. Uh, Bay City from Wolverine Jr. Mark Le Leonar, San Diego, Barrington, Michigan from Dion. Uh, St. Paul, Minnesota from Winford. Minnesota. Becky and Chad in Toledo, Ohio. Detroit from Dav Play. A um, couple of couple words about Ohio State in there that aren't uh, politically correct, but we'll, we'll take them. Uh, Columbus, <laughs> Ohio from Joe. Alex Carter says, Ann Arbor, okay, that's a lie. It's New York. Shout out to Alex Carter for being truthful and lying in the same sense. Uh, Alberta, Canada, Calgary from Cash. Mm. And then Japan from John Espy. But he says, roll damn tide on the Michigan broadcast. Canada on that one. Grand Rapids, Michigan from Jack Bates. And then Aaron uh, Kanwinski. Kanwinski from Grand Rapids as well. So thanks so much for you guys for watching. Keep the comments going. Harrison, after the rankings come out, uh, I will stay on and do a Michigan yep. preview of their opponent, whether it's Georgia or maybe potentially Cincinnati. And I will also do a Michigan live Q&A with this audience here. So all the people watching the Michigan stream, stick with us. We'll be on for probably the next hour to hour and 15 minutes. So keep it rolling. See where Michigan things shake out with this college football playoff. The first birth for the college football playoff after the 17-year Big Ten championship drought is over. Super Chats are welcomed and encouraged. If you Super Chat, we'll get those on the screen on both streams. So be sure uh, to do that if you want to be more involved in the show. Tom Downey's burner account. Hey, James, congrats to your Wolverines. Hashtag we are. He, of course, is a Penn State fan. Uh, Tom Downey's burner is. But, uh, yeah, Wolverines uh, making the CFP for the first time. Uh, thank you to Tom's burner account, which I actually think probably actually is Tom at this point. <laughs> uh, I, I think this whole burner account, he's, he's, he's lived it too far. I think it's just Tom. Uh, so thank you for the $2 from Tom. Back uh, into the company it goes. Yeah, back in. Uh, his paycheck comes back out. I uh, also have one, a, a super coming in from uh, on the Michigan stream we'll get to here in a second. But let me ask this question, Harrison. Who, not will, not will, who should be number one? I'm asking the audience, I'll ask you, get an A for Alabama, get an M if you're correct for Michigan into the <laughs> chat. Let's see who is winning the live popular vote. But I'll turn it over to the man with no agenda in this fight right now. It, you really could go either way. It, it, to be completely unbiased, I think you could go either way. I think Michigan's been the most, con the more consistent team all year. They mm -hmm. had really one bad quarter the entire season, and it, and it cost them probably the number one seed. Had they uh, not, you know, had a bad fourth quarter in East Lansing, they'd be a perfect thirteen and zero. Mm -hmm. I do think Alabama's performance against Georgia was probably the most complete performance we've seen. Although Michigan's against Ohio State was pretty close to that as well. 
you could go either way. I, I, I mean, I, you know, I think that had an SEC team won 42-3 to in the SEC title game and was number two, there's no chance they'd get jumped by the number three team. But the number three team did blow out the number one team. Mm-hmm. So I think you could go either way. At the end of the day, they're going to put Bama number one because – they don't want to rematch, and they're not going to drop Georgia all the way down to number four. So I think it will be Alabama, but I, I think you could argue that Michigan should be number one. A lot of M's coming in the Michigan chat, Lee Harrison, but this super chat coming in from the Michigan Football Report live broadcast. And bless the access. Go Blue. I think Michigan needs to be number one and play Cincy. I agree with you. Um, I, I look, I feel from a Michigan fan perspective. Georgia losing to Alabama was a bummer because to win the national title, if Michigan gets Georgia, they will likely have to beat Georgia and Alabama in back-to-back yep. weeks. Tough task to do, or back-to-back games, I should say, 10 days apart or whatever it is, 12 days apart. Tough tough to do. Had Alabama lost and it had just been Georgia, Michigan could have potentially beat uh, Cincinnati or Notre Dame potentially in the semifinal. And then Georgia in the championship game only had to take down one of the SEC big boys. So, kind of disappointing. A lot of M's coming in, though, for these votes on the Michigan stream. I'm sure it's a little mix over there yeah, on it's, the it's, mainstream. Yeah, it's pretty split over here. I'll get a few shout-outs. Chase says Alabama. Go Blue from Jared. Uh, I'm seeing a Connor say Michigan. Raven says Alabama. Gabriel, Alabama. Ghoul says Alabama. Ian says Michigan. I'd say it's pretty close to 50-50. Mm-hmm. Over here, and <laughs> how about this for 50 50? It's also the live poll question on Chat Sports, exactly 50% each. Mm-hmm. And that, that's kind of where I'm at. You could talk me in to either of those teams being number one. I think both are certainly worthy. I, they're, it's a clear top two right now between Alabama and Michigan. Shout out, producer Brett, for coming up with this question. It's a good one. Here's a super chat from Jaden, and uh, I think we have another one here on our main chat sports stream that we'll get to. Punting down two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Our QB is average at best. We've lost seven in a row. At least the Braves want to chip. That's talking about Al- uh, Georgia. So Georgia punted. They were going to go for a fourth and 10, but a false start made it a fourth and 15. Kirby Smart decided to punt. And uh, that was that. Uh, So, yeah, they were uh, unable to keep up with Bryce Young in Alabama. We'll get to this one as well. Uh, Just a donation from Bubba. Appreciate that, you guys. If you super chat, we are going to put you on the stream uh, throughout this show. Okay, let's talk more about Georgia, James, because all year long, Georgia, Georgia, Georgia. Historic defense. They're giving up less than seven points a game. And then Bill O'Brien, Bryce Young and company hang 41 on them. Should they still be in the playoff? And we should mention this. This would be press, or there's no precedence for this. They would be the first team in the CFP era to lose in the conference championship game and still make the playoff. We've seen teams not be in the CF or in the conference championship game to make it. Alabama's done that before. Ohio, Ohio State's, State's done, done that before. before. But this would be a new thing as well. Should they still be in? I mean, look, if there would have been another team or two you could say can point to i guess the only team with an argument here is notre dame so probably they should be but that really kind of stinks that they're going to lose by 17 and it was that was a blowout game it was really in no. my opinion at the end of it alabama in in a lot of ways could have won 52 to 14 i think in a lot of ways so um it was a blowout and what are the polls what are, what's the committee what are college football, fan, football fans looking for what that georgia takes on michigan beats them and they we get a rematch of this game i just that saw game this, would yeah. stink i wouldn't want to watch that game either way so maybe the committee will come to their senses and say look hey notre dame's sitting out there what a story that would be for an interim coach to take on alabama in the first game or whatever it's oh hell hey give an excuse to bump michigan up there notre dame for michigan one that would be an eyeball drawer and then cincinnati alabama could take uh, take it on the two versus three so Wishful thinking, but not likely to occur. I'm sure Georgia is still going to get in. I'll say this, and I'll get some shout-outs in a second uh, here on Chat Sports. Had Oklahoma State won, they would be sick because I, I think they'd be left out. Mm-hmm. I think they'd be left out for a Georgia team that got blown out. And there's something sick to me that Georgia knew they, they, they didn't have to win that game and that they were still in. That, that feels icky to me, but that's just the reality of it. Tyler says yes. Josiah says no. Mr. Today says no. A lot of no's coming in on our main chat sports stream. So continue to light up the live chat. This super chat coming in from the Michigan football report. So Cam James. says, if Oklahoma State would have won, Georgia would I wouldn't. disagree. What does that mean? I wouldn't think he's saying Georgia in? would be out is uh, what he's saying. Yeah, potentially. Um, I don't think they would have done that. It would at least give them a, a reasonable excuse. Oh, throwing the conference champion, throwing the one loss, all things being equal, and 17-point loss here. But who did Oklahoma State lose to? Is it? Bay, Bay, yeah, okay. So, uh, but that's who they lost to the first game, right? So no, the Iowa first. State. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Iowa State. Yeah. So yeah. they lost to 
there yesterday, but Iowa State was one I was thinking about in the first place. It would give them an excuse, right? It would have, but I still still think SEC bias state would have put Georgia in personally. Cam with another one here, uh, James. He says, if you win any other week, you don't stay at the same rankings. If a team falls ahead of you, Michigan deserves to be the number one seed and play Cincinnati. Yep. How about this? New format. Whoever gets the number one seed, they get to choose who they play out of the <laughs> other three. Who says no? I like that one. That would also be <laughs> bulletin board material, right? Oh, you chose to play us? You yeah. chose to play us? Okay. Um, what does that mean? You think you want it? Yeah, and look um, – as you mentioned, a good point there. If an SEC number two team had won their uh, the title game 42-3, to three, they would have been number one despite what happened the other game, likely, I would say. So Michigan fans will have the, the you know right to feel uh, a gripe. Jim Harbaugh, though, Harrison, right before Michigan scored their last touchdown, he was caught on camera talking. It sounded like the, the offensive coordinator or coaching staff was saying, should we just down it here? Harbaugh saying, no, let's go. We could get the number one seed. So maybe right. he was angling to, to get Cincinnati. I'm not sure. But uh, he knew it was on the stake last I night. I wonder if Bama had won close against Georgia, ha if Michigan could be the number one seed. But I, I don't think that's going to happen. We got a super chat here from Tracy as well. Do these wins equal uh, better recruiting for Big Blue? Uh, we did a top 25 recruiting classes mm -hmm. video on Chat Sports uh, just a couple of days ago, Chase Sr. and I. I didn't realize this. Michigan only has the number 17 ranked class right now. You would think this is a pretty strong pitch to make a late push here. Yeah, it's, I mean, in recruiting, it's typically cyclical. The kids that are in this class right now are basing most of their decision making likely on what happened last year, right? Sure. So they got off to a rough start. I think they'll pay off dividends in the 2023 class more than this 2022 class, though Michigan may snag a guy uh, late down the stretch here that they wouldn't have already gotten. They actually just got one uh, big time. Uh, Devin's back from California, top 200 kid, and they are now trending to get a top 60, 70 safety who's committed to Clemson to maybe flip. So it'll pay small dividends, could see them get up into the top 12 or 13, but top five finish is not going to result in a top five class for Michigan yeah, And this maybe year. they'll be active in the transfer portal as well. well let's cycle through uh, what happened in some of these games yesterday. We'll start with the Wolverines. Uh, handled business, we talked about this all week in the office, James. I, there was no chance Iowa was going to win this game because they're built like Michigan, but they're just way worse across the board. Uh, Michigan manhandled the Hawkeyes I mean, last night. The fact that they have an offense, Harrison, that was ranked as high, a defense that was ranked as high as it was, top 15 in yards given up, but then their offense had worse stats than their defense, right? The defense gave up like 314 yards a game going into yesterday. Their offense was only gaining 299. It was number 123 offense in the country heading into the Big Ten title game. Never in the history of college football have I seen a more putrid offense from a team at the time that was 10-2. and two. Yeah. We saw it play out. A lot of people said, hey, how does Iowa even score a point against Michigan? Well, they barely we, did. Yeah, we got one <laughs> field goal, and we saw what happened the rest of the game. Here's the answer. Uh, they don't. Yeah. That's that. that, that's that. Uh, this was obviously a bit of the, you know, a bit of a shocker, of course. Alabama 41-24. to I'm not shocked Bama won. I am a little surprised that it was so one-sided. Yeah, um, I was surprised that they won, honestly. I thought that Georgia's defense, for all it had been hyped up to be, was going to get the victory. I didn't think that Alabama's, uh, you know, they put up 10 points. They put up three points, you know, 58 minutes the week before against Auburn. And so people thought, well, I, I, this, this Georgia defense is going to completely shut them down. And I expected, honestly, it might be like a 24-21, to 24-17 win. But yeah. I did think Georgia was going to get the win. And I had actually thought about a bunch of the things I was thinking about Michigan. It's like, oh, it's based on Georgia winning this game against Alabama. So I uh, was caught off guard about that I did just wanna a little bit. I didn't want to see at some point this year, can Stetson Bennett play from behind? Because he's been an effective quarterback when they're playing from out in front. Got behind, threw a pick six. Georgia's a team, you, you get ahead of them in a game, It's they're not built to come back, and that certainly uh, was proven on the field yesterday. The AAC, I think it's pretty clear, Cincinnati secured a spot, especially once Oklahoma State lost. They handled business 35-20 to over Houston. Uh, did we uh, read a, a little bit of a report, too, that the NFL really likes Luke Fickle, and he's expected to be a potential NFL head coaching candidate in this cycle. We'll see how that plays out over the next few weeks uh, toward the end of the regular uh, NFL season. But Cincinnati is set to become the first group of five program, James, to make the college football playoff. How about this one, Harrison? Baylor, Oklahoma State. Um, best game of the day for sure. And you know, you know, also the worst. But what came out of that last play, it was the identical, if everyone recalls, last year opening weekend of Big Ten. 
Yeah. Indiana, Indiana, Penn State. Yep. Michael Penix got the ball to just just touch the pylon, just go over the pylon vertically going up in the air, and Oklahoma State didn't. We talked about it before we went on air. He went wide when he, if he just would have cut up field, uh, the, the defender would not have had the right angle if he just lowered his shoulder when he was about the two-yard line. Instead, he tried to beat him to the corner, and he just could not get it. It was a game of inches. Now, had he got it, they may still have been snubbed for, uh, they been. for Georgia. But you'd always want that chance. I'd always give the yeah, kid one sure. more thing to think about. So kind of a bummer for Oklahoma State. You're a little more down on them than I was uh, based on our pre-show conversations of hey, Gunny's not going to get done. Look, he I, has taken an, an offensive juggernaut team, typically like a very high-powered offense, and turned them into a defensive team this year, which in my opinion is, no, is a more impressive well, thing. Mike Gundy is a great coach. But my point was is that – he just historically, he gets you to the big game a lot, whether it's Bedlam late in the season, you beat Oklahoma, you're in a good position, whether it's now you get to the Big 12 championship. But his record in what I would call big games is very poor. You know, it's very is, poor. Remember, it's a big game is very, very poor. How about Ryan Day? People are talking. Clemson, <laughs> Alabama, Michigan, guy, absolute bum. They call him Little Game Ryan is the nickname I'm giving him. <laughs> Look, Gundy's a great coach, but certainly disappointing for that fan base to come up about six inches short. Uh, another super chat on Maine. I uh, got a few to get to. We'll cycle through them real quick. Uh, so at what point is your uh, winning your conference uh, need to set criteria to make the playoff? Georgia had their chance and got bodied. I think that's a fair point and uh, great use of the term bodied, def- by the This way. is definitely Tom. I see him <laughs> typing. He just walked in the office. Yes. I see him through the glass of the studio. He's typing this out on YouTube right now, so I don't believe it's Tom Burner account. I think Tom is like, well, you know, I just want to give you just James Harrison. I'm giving some by the cash, way, expand yeah. the playoff. Conference champions automatically get in. Clear up that criteria. Uh, you want Anybody want to face Utah right now? I don't. They're playing extremely well over the last six weeks. Appreciate the super chat. Brandon's got one as well. Although the Irish might be left out, Notre Dame beat uh, – could Notre Dame beat Alabama, Georgia, Michigan, or Cincinnati? I, don't, I mean, they already lost to Cincinnati by two scores. I honestly think they'd for sure be underdogs against Bama, Georgia, and Michigan. Neutral field against C- Cincinnati, maybe that's a pick 'em game. Uh, maybe they're slight favorites, but we did see that get uh, play look, out on the field. I think the shine is going to come off Georgia a little bit, so I would say Notre Dame have a chance. They'd have a Georgia, chance, right? but they'd be an underdog for, for sure. sure. I mean, probably yep. a 10-point underdog, if we're being honest. Bubba with the super chat as we keep it rolling here, as we wait for the college football playoff committee to release their final rankings. We'll Gandhi. find out yep. what the top four looks like. I warned everyone on my Auburn channel, Bubba and the old man, <laughs> go check that out, that you never want – to play Bama off a bad performance. Georgia didn't stand a chance. I guess, but I, I just – I don't think the way Bama played Auburn really impacted the SEC championship game. I just think Bama completely outplayed Georgia, but uh, uh, I guess we'll never know. Let me see one. this one here from Cam Lott, clearly it's a Michigan guy. Michigan players and coaching staff, clearly is something they talked about. I went back I took a screenshot of it from a video that we did back in August of this year. 2% chance to win the Big Ten East, 0% chance to make the college football playoff, 0% chance to make the national title game is what ESPN's FPI gave Michigan. So Michigan fans were yelling 2% chance on stuff yesterday, Michigan players, fans. The fact that they literally gave them 0% chance to make the college football playoff means that ESPN doesn't understand percentages because clearly every team has – at least one millionth of a percent chance, zero percent chance to make the college football playoff is what ESPN gave them. And as such, they have proven the impossible to be uh, to be wrong. Uh, Michigan is going to be in the college football playoff. I know Mel Tucker won conference coach of the year. Jim Harbaugh should win national coach of for the sure. year. I, I mean, for, to get this team to the playoff after last year mm-hmm. is uh, an unbelievable feat. There's no doubt about that. Let's get to our uh, projected final rankings. I think we all know what the top four will be. Maybe the seeding is up for debate. Uh, I think Bama's going to jump up to one, uh, mostly to avoid uh, the rematch with Georgia, and I don't think they're going to drop Georgia to four, but maybe. Where do things have happened? Uh, Michigan would come in at two. They would stay where they are. Uh, Georgia at three to avoid that Bama-Georgia rematch in the semis. And then Cincinnati, uh, barring something unforeseen, should make the college football playoff with that four seed. And then who cares what five and six look like? Notre Dame, Baylor, uh, neither have a chance to get in, in my opinion. But I think this is probably what it's going to look like, James. I would love to see Georgia snubbed and <laughs> replace Notre Dame. Oh, it's not going to happen, unfortunately. And as you said, it really doesn't matter who these five and six. You don't get a consolation prize. You don't get a better bowl game from being five versus really being number seven or something like that. No. So uh, it doesn't matter. But there will be some interesting um, – 
New Year's Six games. I don't think there will be some good New Year's Six. They'll do some bowl games. We'll uh, have all the bowl matchups later on today when they are revealed here on the Chat Sports Channel. Uh, Of course, the Michigan Channel here, Harrison, if you watch on there. We don't care about this New Year's Six Bowl. It's a playoff-only channel, okay? It's, this is a great month for Michigan. Recruiting coming up in less than two weeks, Harrison. Signing day on December 15th. All kinds of content on that. And then we'll have college football playoff bonanza leading up to December 31st. I'm excited. It's going to be a huge month for this channel and for uh, for this team. Real quick, Brad, I think this is a good time uh, to subscribe to Chat Sports because our college football coverage has been lighting it up. we got almost 2,000 people watching live right now. We've been doing col- uh, college coaching hot boards. Uh, the latest like news and rumors around the sport. Uh, recruiting is heating up. We just released a recruiting video. We also took a look at the top players in the transfer portal. Now, we filmed that video before Quinn Ewers announced he was going in the portal, so we might have to redo that video, which we probably will because our college uh, football coverage has never been hotter on chat sports. Shout out to all of you. You guys seem to be enjoying the content, so we're going to keep doing college football videos so subscribe we're also going to subscriber only chat on our main chat sports youtube channel so if you want to be in the live chat subscribe if you want more college football videos subscribe as well as james said we're going to react to the the college football playoff top four as they come out hopefully in the next 10 or 15 minutes we'll have a bowl game palooza later on in the day and recruiting over the next couple of weeks things are heating up and don't go anywhere i don't think this coaching carousel is done so stay tuned for that since we're on sub only chat this is the time to rep your squad shout out your favorite team in the live chat Obviously, a lot of Michigan fans on the Michigan Football Report. Uh, we'll get some shout-outs to the loyal ones over there, and we'll also get some shout-outs uh, to everyone here on Chat Sports. Uh, I'm seeing an Auburn from Muffin Man. Uh, Andrew says Oregon. We've got Notre Dame from Chris. Uh, Josh is an Iowa fan. Sorry about last night, Josh. That was a bloodbath. Ark says Georgia. Michigan State, Purdue. I'm seeing uh, – Jackson State, shout out Dion and the boys for winning the SWAC. 11 and 1 season. 11 and 1. Pretty good. Pretty wild uh, in year two for Dion, uh, Coach Prime out there. Texas A&M, roll tie. By the way, I don't know if you saw, that place was packed for the SWAC title game. Dion's got it rolling over there. You got some loyal uh, ones you want to shout out on the Michigan football report? You know, it's funny uh, because, you know, it's not like this is targeted. Our videos not only just, hey, just goes to Michigan fans only. It's not that it's not that um, you know concentrated Michigan fans. We've got Iowa, we've got Georgia, we've got Cincinnati, go Bearcats, Georgia, Georgia from Connor and James. I think it's the Michigan people. Fister resistor go blue. Uh, Eddie with a Bama Fister resistor. What a name! I, I don't know what that means, but <laughs> okay, bro, that's cool. Uh, Peyton Kroger says Michigan baby. You are love says Nor Norte Dame. I'm not sure if that's familiar with Notre Dame. Uh, go blue from Travis Mitchell, my guy. Travis, what's up? Uh, Vamsi says go Bearcats. Uh, Logan, it's great to be a Michigan Wolverine. So a lot of Michigan fans. But I would say it's by 70% Michigan, 30% uh, other teams here on the Michigan Football Report live stream. We got about 700 of you watching now here live with us. As we all know, the College Football Playoff Committee tends to drag this out on the final rankings, even though the top four is pretty clear. So let's get to some other topics in college football because I just mentioned this is why you guys should subscribe because the coaching carousel has been crazy recruiting seating up a lot is happening looks like Brent Venables is going to be the guy for the Oklahoma Sooners uh all the chatter all the reports uh, coming out that uh you know he is quote the front runner but really what that means is uh they're just ironing out the details for him to be their next head coach does sound like he would bring Jeff Levy with him the Ole Miss offensive coordinator who uh has been a um Uh, one of the better offensive minds over the last decade or so in college football. And, of course, James Venables was on Bob Stoops' staff uh, from 1999 to 2011 at Oklahoma. So uh, the fan base has been calling for this. They want him. Mm -hmm. It appears uh, that the the athletics department, the Board of Regents in Norman, have zeroed in on him as well. One thing I'm going to say about Venables, seeing him in person, uh, 2018 college football playoff uh, media day against Alabama – Harrison, he is the is the manliest face of any person I've been around. His jaw and his chin, like it's like a it's like a a rock. He is the manliest face I've ever seen in my life. He looks Built like different. he literally literally looks like he's a, a marine in person. Uh, <laughs> he really is. So, um, you know, it's been a long time coming for him. He has been a top candidate, and then for a while, the last three or four years, it's always been like, well, Venables just doesn't want to be a head coach, and people stop even considering him, although realistically, given what they built that program, he should have always been a candidate, but he's turned down plenty of opportunities to interview for jobs. He's turned down plenty of opportunities to get hired for jobs as well. So uh, now he takes a job clearly that 
he was either angling for or was the one or one or two jobs that yeah. he would potentially have left Clemson in the kind of Chris And those were the there. rumors forever is that maybe he just doesn't want to be a head coach. He makes $3 yeah. million a year to just run a defense at Clemson, yeah. but uh, it does appear that OU is the hire uh, or is the job for him. Grade the hire, assuming it does go through A, B, C, D, or F. It's certainly interesting. They're going defense here, James, which is uh, certainly a totally different direction, but he's been – I think pretty safely the best defensive coordinator over the past decade or so in college football. Yeah, and he's bringing an offensive coordinator in that he's got right. familiarity with that ran a phenomenal offense with Lane Kiffin there at Ole Miss. So they're not necessarily turning away uh, from Oklahoma that play style from an offensive juggernaut, right? They have been the most consistent offensive juggernaut school in college football for the last 20 plus years now. And so uh, it's, it's exciting to see what Venables will do there. He's got an offensive uh, coordinator in place now what potentially could happen if you've got a defensive first coach, you know, if that offensive coordinator himself leaves after a couple of years to get a head coaching job himself, then yep. where does their offense go? Hopefully they can kind of have a nice bench of quarterbacks, coach, passing game coordinator sure. that can continue it on. The there. key is to keep Caleb Williams. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's, that's key. Number one, a couple of shout outs here. Uh, Gimme says uh, B I'm seeing a B plus in there. And that's kind of where I'm at. I mean, there's some uncertainty. He's never been a head coach. So, mm -hmm. Uh, I, I wouldn't give it a flat-out A, but I do think it's a pretty good hire. Will says A in the chat. Uh, Marky with the super chat. B higher, defense in SEC West is going to be need. I do think that's a good point. With the move to the SEC, you, you at least have to have an average to above average defense. Mm -hmm. uh, although I do think Alabama proved yesterday, and I've said this for five years, elite offense beats elite defense. This is days. Sam Brown's burner account, by the way. Yeah. Marky Parlay, come on. <laughs> Jaden Anderson, and uh, we'll shift back to the college football playoff shortly. Why is Stetson Bennett starting? Where's uh, JT Daniels? Kirby Smart said, said this loss was a wake-up call. If this is a wake-up call, where or what were the other L's? What what is I don't know what that means. The last part of that, but the J the Q I do think there will be whether it's real or not from the fan base and nationally. I do think you're going to hear some. Do you go to JT Daniels now? Stetson Bennett can't keep up with Bryce Young. Is it JT Daniels dime who or time who obviously is more talented and has uh, you know more upside than a guy like Stetson Bennett? Yeah, Harrison, we are waiting the college football playoff rankings. Uh, I got candy in my ear. She so said, "Hey, we're just we're just getting some coffee here. We're we're getting things going." So here are projected rankings. The the, the people here around the office. I don't agree with these, even though I'm on this show. I think Michigan should be number one. But the projections, though. Alabama one, Michigan two. Alabama would face Cincinnati, and Michigan would be against Georgia in the two versus three. I'll say this. Like Coleridge, Michigan, and Jim Harbaugh, they're not losing to a guy named Stenson, okay? Just believe me on that. Stenson? Yeah, I'm adding an N. Stenson. Is it like Trubinsky? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, should uh, Bama and Georgia – Rematch in the sem semifinals. Um, <laughs> the real ones know. Uh, if you watch Friday Night Lights, real ones know. Semifinal. Uh, sh shout out Buddy Garrity. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I, I do think if Michigan in the committee's eyes has earned the number one seed, then they should get the number one mm -hmm. seed, even if that means Georgia and Bama have to play in the semis. I don't think they should seed – based on avoiding this rematch. I, I don't think they should do that. Let me throw an idea out there, because I saw this conspiracy theory on Twitter last night, and it's not crazy. Wouldn't, in some ways, regionalizing, because you're on, we know that the December 31st games, when they played that year, they always get worse ratings because you're trying to compete with New Year's Eve, right? So wouldn't regionalizing the matchups maybe have a better TV audience? Michigan, Cincinnati, you could play off that whole you know Midwest thing. You have those two, sure. two states and the surrounding states, really high audience. SEC championship game two, et cetera, you know, that will and, go there. And then from an SEC perspective, you actually guarantee an SEC team in the national title game if you face it, Georgia and Alabama in the semi. So it's not crazy. I think it's very low likely that it happens. But if they're the number one seed for sure, maybe, if they think Michigan would be. And if, you know what's interesting to me? You put this matchup in the semis, these teams have more time to prepare for the semifinal game than for the final game. Mm -hmm. Give Kirby Smart a month, three weeks to try and adjust, uh, or really a month, to try and adjust for Bama to, for the rematch right away instead of potentially in the national title game. I think it's interesting. I don't think they'll do it, but uh, I think it, uh, they should consider it. Uh, Mike Dibble says yes. Uh, Josh says yes. Uh, Carmelo says yes. Iron says no. 
Uh, still waiting for the committee to reveal their top four to us. Uh, we will get that to you as soon as we get it. Over 2,000 live, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Let's talk Heisman, James. And, you know, I tweeted this out, and you got upset, and I understand your boy Aiden Hutchinson deservedly a Heisman finalist They should have handed him the ball last it, night inside the two-yard line. They should have run the JJ, the JJ Watt, where they put him yes. at fullback, slip him out, throw it yes. to him. They should have done that, but uh, – they did not. Uh, Bryce Young secured the Heisman in the first half, in my opinion, against Georgia uh, with uh, the way he shredded that defense. 461 total yards in the SEC title game. I believe it's an SEC title game record against what we were talking about is one of the best defenses in the last 10 or 20 years in college football. It is over. Young will win it. The only question is who all gets an invite to um, to New York at this point. Yeah, so, I mean, Alabama wins by 17 in this one. Um and Bryce Young played really good, and he probably deserves the Heisman. I think I dis discounted how good his stats were turning out to be. He already has beaten two a single-season record for passing touchdowns in an Alabama season for their school in two less games than in the season that Tua did it, which is the 2018 season. So uh, in that perspective, you know, Tua didn't win the Heisman, but he was an overwhelming favorite until the last couple games of the year, really the Auburn game, and then, of course, uh, the SEC title game that year where he got hurt and Jalen Hurts had actually come back, yeah. if you recall. They were down seven to uh, to Georgia in the SEC title game in that 2018 season, and so Kyler Murray won the Heisman. But I think he won it. Uh, I do think Aiden Hutchinson will be second. Which for a defender, That's what awesome. are you going to do? But I, well, who is Did Harrison? Give me a break on this. <laughs> Hey, uh, I didn't come up with this. Uh, I will blame uh, producer Trace for this one. Did Bryce Young seal the Heisman? Type H for hell yes. Type Y. You're Yoder. You, you're, you're biased toward Aiden Hutchinson. He won the Heisman. It, it, it's, I don't know if it's ever been more clear cut uh, heading into whenever the ceremony is here in a few weeks. Uh, Bryce it's that, Young It's next will Saturday, win. right? Yeah, it's a week from – Oh, that's it's right. Six it's, days uh, from the Heisman So Trophy that'll here. be December 12th? Yeah, they're, they're, they're not – 11th? A week they're they're not doing it in mid-January like they did last year, yeah. early January. So um, from the Michigan audience perspective, you know, did Bryce uh, Young win the Heisman? A uh, lot of lot of whys in there. You're Yoders. So shout out to, to the real ones in the, in the Michigan chat at least. One cool thing for the Michigan people, I do think if they invite five people, I do believe there's a really strong chance Michigan can get two invites. I know you say cool. you're crazy, but with the stats they put up at the end of the year, seven touchdowns in the last two games for Hassan Hassan, I think he could end up being fifth in the voting and maybe get an invite. I think Will Anderson from Alabama is the other one in contention for that on number five spot. So we'll see how that one shakes out. But I think it's exciting, and Aiden Hutchinson definitely will be in New York. Mostly hell yes is on chat sports, but a couple of uh, – uh, I got some Yoder people uh, over there. A couple of Yoder truthers over there as well. We'll get to that super chat in a moment, but I want to tell you guys about our sportsbook partner, BetU. I actually made some money on championship Saturday. I whiffed on the Bama-Georgia game, but made money on some other ones. And you guys can make money all bowl season long and throughout the NFL season as well. Go to chatsports.com slash bet. You got to use that link because otherwise you're not going to get this awesome promo deal. Then you pro plug in the promo code chat125 to get a 125% deposit bonus if you want free money you could just put your entire bank account on Bryce Young to win the Heisman you won't win that much back because of the odds but it's free money because he's gonna win chatsports.com slash bet use that promo code chat 125 uh, make some money throughout bowl season uh, let's go to Greg here with the super chat Bama one Michigan two uh, Georgia three Cincy four that's kind of yeah equals reality that's what it looks like I, although I, I wouldn't say it's a given uh, Greg, as we look at our projected final rankings, that Georgia's just going to beat Michigan. I mean, we, we all watched what happened yesterday. Now, Bama's spread it out. We have, you know, fast athletes on offense. Style is certainly not what Michigan will bring to the table. But I think Michigan and Georgia are very similar. I think their quarterbacks are very similar. They're game managers uh, that mostly make good decisions. They like to run the football and play defense. I think Michigan could grind one out over Georgia. Uh, what do you think a point spread would be, assuming that ends up being the matchup? Georgia minus two and a half, <sighs> minus four, four and a half. I think it'd be Georgia, but slight favorite. Before yesterday, the projected would have been Georgia would have been in favor over Michigan by like nine, nine and a half. I think now, it's like four now. I would say two to four, although like – I don't think Georgia is going to be – I don't think Georgia is going to be like uh, overly uh, – overly 
the, the, the matchup between Michigan and Georgia, I don't think favors Georgia um, remarkably that they should be a favorite. But I think just because they're trying to even out the bets, Georgia will be favored by three to five points over Michigan. But Harrison, um, some interesting things when it comes to Alabama-Cincinnati, uh, if we you know, talk about that for one second, is Luke Fickle. Last time Ohio State beat Alabama 2014 season, semifinal, right? Who was the defensive coordinator? It was Luke Fickle. Yep. So he has a blueprint in the past of beating a mm. Nick Saban team, a little bit different Nick Saban team back then. But um, you know, it's not like I don't want to discount Cincinnati. I do think they can uh, end up beating Alabama if they have the right game plan and everything goes by. We do want to talk about what's on the bottom of the screen. Yep. We are in the ear. They say we're about to announce just momentarily. But reports out there now that Oregon's head football coach, Mario Cristobal, is headed back to South Florida to be the new head football coach at Miami. Although, don't they still have a football coach? So they're just trying to fire somebody? The, like, the way Miami has handled this is pretty poor. They've basically... Uh, and we'll, we'll get back to this later in the show, but we are about to get the college football playoff rankings from the playoff committee uh, as we get going here. So stay tuned for that. They're going to go from six to one, it appears. Wow, Ohio State jumps up to number six for some reason without playing. Strength of loss to Michigan beating Iowa. Uh, yes, hey, so maybe Michigan's number one now. Hey, yeah, who knows? <laughs> for sure, right? <laughs> but I mean, so where where do you put Baylor or Notre Dame in the scenario? Do they drop is is Baylor, they Baylor seven? No credit? Or does Ohio State somehow beat uh, beat Notre Dame? That's a surprising one, Harrison. Yeah. I don't get it really at all. So uh, I don't know. We'll see what things shake out. Uh, Condi in my ear saying, not a mistake, James. Ohio State number six. Which only, you know, that gives Michigan one of the better wins you'll see over here. Obviously, Georgia's, uh, Alabama's win over Georgia is a better win uh, in this scenario. But if Michigan's trying to make a play for number one, we'll see. So, number five coming in, Harrison, in the year. Notre Dame, we got yep, confirmed. The Notre, Notre Dame, Dame Fighting Irish. And uh, Thomas Mott, uh, one of our contributors at Chat Sports, swore to me on Twitter that there's no way Notre Dame would be higher than Big 12 champs uh, Baylor. Not only are they, Ohio State is as well. So, they clearly did not value uh, Baylor's uh, Big 12 championship that much because they're not even in the top six. So the top four, or as we mentioned, we just don't know the order yet. Uh, Notre Dame, Ohio State on the outside looking in. I'm a bit surprised the Buckeyes moved up. But again, if you're not in the top four, it does not really matter. But no uh, magical storyline for the Fighting Irish uh, for Marcus Freeman. He will not coach in the playoff in his first career game. We'll see what bowl game they end up being in. And we'll have that covered because we're going to break down every single bowl game later on in the day. We'll have all the bowl games. Once we get them in, we'll do a video and we'll break them down for you guys. Subscribe. More college football news and rumors and coaching hot boards along the way as well. Cincinnati, the number four team in the college football playoff. But I want to mention to subscribe as well. If Mario Cristobal does go to Miami, we'll have an Oregon hot board for you guys. So stay tuned for that in the coming days. Cincinnati at number four. Uh, James, uh, first group of five team to make the playoff. Uh, good for the Bearcats. Luke Fickle. Uh, gets his chance. They get their chance uh, to play in the college football playoffs. What a world we're living in. I hope an Ohio State fan, at least one is watching, gets me to say this. Cincinnati's in the college football playoff and Ohio State's not. What? Who would have th thunk it? Who would have thought it that ever, ever would be happening uh, here? That's amazing to see. Um, the TV ratings for that game, I think, will be lower, no matter if they face Alabama or they face Michigan, whichever team gets number one, because Cincinnati – has no national draw. They don't have alumni that spread out all over the country like in Alabama, Michigan, uh, Georgia do. So I think the the, uh, the ratings for that game will probably be lower. So I'm guessing whoever gets the number one seed, that'll be the early game. The two versus three, of course, uh, will be the primetime game, no matter if it's uh, Alabama, Georgia, or Michigan, Georgia. Shout out to the Big 12. Three. Cincinnati made the college football playoff. Yep. First. So uh, <laughs> we will uh, see who the top three are. <laughs> uh, the joke there is Cincinnati, of course, one of four new teams joining the Big 12 either in 2023 or in 2024. Still waiting for the committee to reveal the top three. Those three remaining teams in whatever order will be Alabama, Michigan, and Georgia. It's just a matter of where they see. Georgia will be the number three seed. So uh, chalk so for, far, at least in the top four here, James. Uh, the Bulldogs drop from one to three. The only question left now is, does the committee have the stones to do a rematch in the semis. Do they have the stones to put Bama at number two and slide Michigan up to number one? I think they have the stones because they've done crazy things in uh, these rankings in the past. And look, Harrison, you're you're as a fanhood, as an alum, you're a victim of the the, made, the, the biggest stones jumping Ohio State from six up to number four in 2014. So 
We'll see. Georgia and Cincinnati are in the college football playoff. Folks, we wait for Condi to give it to us in the, our ear. Condoleezza Rice hooked up to the headset. Who should be number one? Who will face Cincinnati in the college football playoff? Light up the comments with A's. If you're an SEC homer, if you're a genuine college football fan, Give me some M's in the comments. Let's see who the people think. We'll catch uh, up on Super Chats your when we can, team. by the way, as we're awaiting for who's going to be one and two. Uh, I'll get some shout-outs, and then James can get some as well. Uh, by the way, real quick, you compare the resumes. Pretty similar overall. The only clear area Bama's got Michigan beat is in strength of schedule, uh, but their resumes are very, very similar. Uh, Nick says Michigan, Zorro, Michigan. Randy says Alabama. Doughboy says Alabama. Dale Bowen says Alabama. Roll Tide in the chat. Uh, James, uh, shout out those Michigan fans over there. I know you got you some. You know, it's almost all M's, as you can potentially imagine, from Sean, Tyler, Ethan Young, uh, Carl Cordell, Cordell, I'm sorry about that. Uh, Skyler says Michigan, Alex Harrison. So anybody watching, we've got 1,000 live here on the Michigan Football Report live YouTube channel, 3,000 on our main uh, chat sports coverage. Subscribe to the channel, no matter which one of these channels you're watching on. If you're a Michigan fan, subscribe to the Michigan Football Report. Hit that sub button. We are going to have daily content the entire month of December leading up to the December 31st matchup against either Georgia or Cincinnati, which we will find out here momentarily. Of course, they're dragging it out. Look, this isn't us dragging it out. We want to give the information. Uh, the CFP in the year, Connelly Rice says, hey, it's a ratings game, baby. We have got to uh, keep things rolling and drag it out. let the people suffer until we can give you this information. So keep the A's rolling. Keep the M's rolling. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, youtube.com slash Michigan TV. It's the Michigan Football Report here on YouTube. We're going to start doing more live shows, right? Uh, I think we'll start trying to do a live show once per week for the rest of the month of December. Already 167 new subscribers on our main Chat Sports YouTube channel. There it is, Alabama 1, Michigan 2. So the committee did not have the stones to do an SEC title rematch in the semifinals. Michigan, uh, the number two overall seed. Now the only thing to sort out, James, is where will Alabama pick to play? They can either choose AT&T Stadium in Arlington or they can choose the Orange Bowl down in Miami Gardens. Well, I'll say this. What Alabama, and if they're watching, they should know this. Uh, Cincinnati, people from Cincinnati flock to Dallas like no other. Tom Downey, a good example of that. So I think that the home field advantage in Dallas might go to uh, Cincinnati, so Alabama should consider going to, uh, <laughs> to Miami. That's obviously from a personal perspective, Harrison. I would love it for Michigan to be here in Dallas so I don't have to travel and we can do the whole media uh, day uh, circus, media, you know, uh, Radio Row, etc., and not have to go on the road for it, but we'll see what happens with uh, where they're going to play. I don't know if we're actually going to find, find out right now because the number one team. Yeah, Alabama Purdue. has chosen the Cotton Bowl at AT&T Stadium, uh, so Michigan and Georgia will be in the Orange Bowl. We're about to break this all down and react to the top four, but just to run through it real quick, Alabama, Cincinnati, New Year's Eve at the Cotton Bowl. I would guess that's going to be the afternoon game, mm -hmm. but we don't know officially yet. And then Michigan and Georgia uh, will likely be uh, the primetime game, but we'll, we'll, once we find that out, uh, we will certainly uh, get that to all of you. And then, of course, the national championship game, uh, Monday, January 10th. Uh, where's that game at this year, by the way? Indianapolis, Indianapolis the national yeah. title game? Okay, so that'll be 10 days after the college football playoff semifinal games. But we ready to break this down? Is that what we're doing here? All right, we're going to react to the college football playoff committee's top four rankings and the semifinal matchups, so stay tuned. You're watching College Football Now. Harrison Graham and James Yoder with you as the College Football Playoff Committee has revealed their final four rankings. Subscribe to the channel because college football coverage is heating up here on Chat Sports. Let's react to it, James. Here's the top four as uh, the two matchups are set. The Alabama Crimson Tide jump to number one after their win over Georgia. Michigan stays at two. The Bulldogs fall to three. And then Cincinnati, the Bearcats, become the first group of five program to make the college football playoff. Notre Dame, Ohio State on the outside looking in as the final four is set. James, your initial reactions are what? Yeah, I mean, this is what we expected. So uh, a little bit of a bummer that Alabama won this game because it you know, took away from the drama. These shows are a little more fun where there's drama and people have the opportunity to argue. I do think, though, Michigan has a legitimate gripe for not being number one, but it's clear that the college football playoff committee wanted to avoid a rematch in the semifinal of a game we just saw. And so as such, it didn't really matter 
uh, what happened in those games in a lot of ways. They were going to try and avoid a rematch, so Michigan could have won 75 nothing. They probably still would have been number two in these rankings to avoid a CFP semifinal matchup between Alabama and Georgia. Now, it does line up for potential all-SEC national title game, but maybe not. The crazy things have happened. Um, we've never gotten, Harrison, in the history of the college football playoff, we have never gotten two good games. One no. is always a blowout, and there's yep. usually one good game, one blowout, but there's been quite a few years where they've been both blowouts. So maybe this is the uh, the year we get two good games. I'm not sure. Alabama-Cincinnati, that feels like a mismatch to me considering what we saw yesterday uh, out of Alabama. But Cincinnati, you know, they've got a good coach. They've got a good program. They're in the top four for a reason. They've got been on a five-year run that's, that's yeah. wildly impressive for a, a group of five team. Yeah, no doubt about that. So who you got? Who's won in the national championship? The final four is set. This will be the pinned comment, by the way. If you think it's the Crimson Tide, type Bama. If you think it's Georgia, type UGA. Maybe they get their rematch. If you think it's the Michigan Wolverines, type M-I-C-H. If you think it's the Cincinnati Bearcats, uh, type C-I-N. This will be the pinned comment on today video so if you get hit with the YouTube ad break scroll on down and either pick Bama Georgia Michigan or Cincinnati so the stage is set here Bama will face Cincinnati Michigan will face Georgia and we should mention James that the sites have been chosen as well Alabama has chosen the Cotton Bowl they will play at Jerry World in Arlington uh, Texas on New Year's Eve the Michigan Wolverines will face Georgia in the Orange Bowl on New Year's Eve as well. Let's talk about the Cotton Bowl first. Uh, if I had to guess, as we're filming this, we don't quite know yet, that this will probably be the afternoon game because uh, Georgia, Michigan, probably a bigger draw nationally. That'll probably be the prime time game. Bama, Cincinnati. B very interested to see, A, what the point spread is, mm -hmm. and B, can Cincinnati represent the group of five well? Because if Cincinnati gets blown out, as long as there's a four-team playoff system, you got to think it's going to be hard for a committee to give another group of five team a chance if they get blown out, even though there have been blowouts every single year in the college football playoff. You know, it's kind of like um, the Big 12. When Oklahoma goes in the last few years, they get blown out. It does hurt the reputation of the conference. Sure. They don't get the uh, the benefit of the doubt. Half with the Big 10, back-to-back -back years 15 and 16, uh, the Big 10 got shut out two short years, uh, Michigan yep. State to Alabama, and then Clemson shut out Ohio State in those years. And so the Big Ten had a reputation stain for a few years until Ohio State got back into it and then, of course, beat Clemson last year. This seems like it to be, uh, I would say, I, I, mean, I guess it was a 14 to 17 point spread, honestly, Harrison. Like, yeah. It's going to be a pro probably Spe a pretty big one. Um, and I don't know where uh, it's going to be a shootout. I, I think Cincinnati has been a defensive struggle team but I don't think they've got enough defense to shut down Alabama in any way so if they're I should say this, if they're going to win the game or have a chance I think it's one of these ones where the winning team is going to have over 40 points either way and so um, Cincinnati is going to have to muster some more offense uh, you know they're not just going to be able to shut down and, and hold you know, Alabama Cincinnati's almost points. averaging 40 points a game it's not like they can't score mm -hmm. but uh, this will obviously be their stiffest competition yet I mean there's no doubt about that uh, one thing going against Alabama, John Mechie is expected to be out, of, out for the year. It sounds like he tore his ACL in that SEC championship game, so that's one less weapon the Bearcats would have to worry about. Uh, but, uh, look, it's going to be a tall order. I think out of the three other teams, this is probably the worst matchup for Cincinnati with how much speed uh, Bama has on offense and with their quarterback, Bryce Young. So the Bearcats will face uh, the Alabama Crimson Tide in the college football playoff semifinal matchup. And uh, we are getting the point spreads in. Uh, we're going to get those updated for you guys just verbally real quickly. Bama, 14-point favorites. I thought it might be a little bit higher. We'll see how that line shifts over the next uh, few weeks leading up to that game. So who you got in this one? Type A for Alabama. Type C for Cincinnati. Look, it's, I'm going to pick Alabama, but I hope Cincinnati at least uh, puts up a competitive fight. I'm calling my shot here. Cincinnati. All right. They're going to win. Um, right. Luke Fickle, that, that defensive prowess, uh, he's, he's been part of a team. He was the defensive coordinator of an Ohio State team that beat Alabama. And I'm going back back in the day, Harrison, when you were just a young whippersnapper. Heisman Trophy winners 
always lost their bowl game. There oh, was like yeah. a like a 15 it's year like stretch curse. in the 90s, or early 2000s, something like that. Like 14 to 15 years, the Heisman Trophy winner yep. lost the bowl game, and especially if a Heisman Trophy winner got in the national title game, the old BCS, etc. Before the CFP got, yep. out, it was always a guarantee they were going to lose. Guaranteed. I'm going back. What's old is new. Michigan's beating Ohio State, uh, and I'm bringing this curse back to pulling it forward out of the, ni- the you know the 1990s into the 2020, 20 you know 2020s. I guess. It Listen, is. I'd love to see Cincinnati win. I'd also love if you guys subscribe to us here at Chat Sports because our college football coverage, it ain't going anywhere because your guys are enjoying our videos, so we'll keep cranking them out for you guys. Hit that subscribe button, more college uh, coaching hot boards. We'll have more specific previews of these matchups in the days to come as well, Uh, so stay tuned for that. Recruiting is heating up. Uh, College football is red hot right now, and uh, you guys are enjoying it, so if you want more videos around college football, hit that subscribe button. It's youtube.com slash chat sports TV. Okay, let's talk about the other matchup, James. Uh, uh, If you're watching live, we're still live on the Michigan Football Report as well. The Wolverines get the Georgia Bulldogs, which obviously, you know, that's not what you were hoping for because now, pretty good chance if you're Michigan, you'd have to go through uh, both the SEC Blue Bloods in Georgia and in Alabama. Look, I think Michigan can win this game, Harrison. I think they uh, match up well against Georgia. I'm glad they're playing George in the semifinal versus Alabama because, look, Alabama has a higher potent offense. I think uh, when game planned right, a higher potent offense potentially was what, what's going to beat Michigan. But also Nick Saban, when he has time to prepare for a game, he's just unbelievable when he does that. You know, when yeah. he has time to prepare for uh, almost any game, uh, opening season games, college world playoff semifinals. So we'll see if Michigan can overcome Georgia. They are not um, – an offense that I'm scared of. They've got a running game that can make an impact, but it's not a running game that Michigan hasn't uh, seen. Uh, clearly, uh, Michigan State had a hell of a game running the game against Michigan, but they have really cleaned up all of their uh, deficiencies when it uh, comes to giving up yards on the ground. Now, a running quarterback can still hurt them, but that's not what Georgia has. And so Alabama not being Michigan's opponent, I think, really helps them. Uh, I think that seven and a half points spread is is – Unfair to Michigan fans. I think it should be more like a three or four one. Yeah, seven and a half point favorites for Georgia. That's that's pretty interesting as the early line there. I thought it'd be like four or five maybe. Uh, I think that's disrespectful to how consistent Michigan has been all year. And uh, I watched Georgia get bulldozed yesterday. There's no reason why Michigan doesn't at least have a good chance in that game. Now, should Georgia probably be a slight favorite? Yeah, I'd say mm. so. But – I don't think it should be an overwhelming favorite in the li- in the slightest. So that will be the Orange Bowl in that college football playoff semifinal game down in Miami Garden. Seven and a half point is what the early uh, spread is. Georgia favorite yep. over Michigan. Over under, it's an NFL, uh, bad NFL team over under 43 Yikes. and a half points, uh, which is funny enough, that's right around the same that the Big Ten Championship game was yesterday. They slightly went over it. I think they beat it by a point and a half, 45 po- total points, 43 and a half points was the over under. So let me know who you got. Why? Watching on Chat Sports or watching on the Michigan Football Report. Type M for Michigan. Type G for Georgia. Harrison, put put everything's on the table here. Whatever you say here, you're gonna get ridiculed if you're right and, and champion or ridiculed if you're wrong, championed if you're right. Mostly by me. So let me know. I actually I kind of think Michigan has a good chance in this game. I think these teams are built similarly. Stetson Bennett is awful against pressure, Mm -hmm. and Michigan has the best two-man pass rush in the country with Hutchinson Mm -hmm. and Ajabo. If they get consistent pressure, I think Michigan wins this game. I think this game, James, will be won in the trenches. Whichever offensive and defensive line performs better in this game will win this game. That was true in the SEC title game. Alabama held up. Georgia did not. Uh, So – I might pick Michigan here, man. I'm going to have to think about this more. Uh, But uh, my early prediction is Michigan grinds one out over Georgia, something like 20 to 17, 23 to 20. I think it'll be one of those type of games. I think the 43 and a half feels right for the over under. uh, But uh, we'll see how it plays out. Early prediction, or are you saving that? Uh, No, I'll I'll keep it. Early prediction right now, I'll go Michigan. 35-21, 35-21, Georgia. Uh, early wow. early word, this isn't official yet, so if this changes when, when you watch this later, uh, we're reporting this live, is that Michigan will indeed, Michigan-Georgia, be the primetime game. I just saw that Michigan's being told they'll be the primetime game. We'll see what happens. If you want to go bet on these matchups, you can do it with BetUS. I'm sure uh, these games are already up uh, on BetUS, so go to chatsports.com slash bet. 
Use our promo code CHAT125. You put down 100 bucks, you get 125 for free. Betting on bowl games is fun. It makes some of the smaller bowls more interesting as well. Once those bowls are announced, uh, those will be available to bet on as well. Chatsports.com slash bet. Use our promo code CHAT125. Go make some money throughout bowl season. To, so to cir circle back, excuse me, to the final four, it's set. Alabama 1, Michigan 2, Georgia 3, Cincinnati 4 in the college football playoff. So we talk a little bit more about this, James. What really stands out out of this grouping? I, I think the biggest thing, I know Bama's not a new face, but some new blood, right? Georgia's going to get another chance mm -hmm. uh, that they had a few years ago. That one slipped away. Cincinnati represents the group of five. Michigan in the playoff for the first time. So not completely fresh, but it, there's some new teams in there, which I think is really good for the sport. New blood. You've got uh, fan bases that, that feel they can win. I mean, Georgia's been in the past, but you don't have the four mainstays all in it, basically. Clemson's on it. Oklahoma's on it. Ohio State's on it. And a given year, basically, it was pretty much a guarantee that three of those four teams will be in it along with Alabama. And now you've only got one of them. It would have been pretty cool had Alabama lost that you basically have four teams that really, for the most part, yeah. outside of Georgia being in it the one year, had never been in it. I think Michigan beating Ohio State uh, gives a lot of teams, fan bases, some hope, right? Hope that, that hey, we can get in too. And then Cincinnati, really, it gives group of five teams. It really gives any team, you know, you've got to go on a multiple year run of really strong seasons to even be considered given that Cincinnati started inside the top 10. So it's not that they had to jump from, you know, 18th up to the top four. But you win, you go undefeated, and a lot of things had to go right. The Pac-12 had to eliminate themselves. The Big 12 had to eliminate themselves. Notre Dame had to be on your schedule that year. You had to go on the road and face them and have them in the, tie, the, the top six. So everything had to go right. Undefeated team, and they came in at number four. So that's intriguing to me. Michigan's intriguing. Georgia, Alabama, a little less new, a little less intriguing. Um, and from a college football fan perspective, a national audience perspective, I really hope it's not a rematch of a game we just saw yesterday that wasn't very close. So – Pulling, obviously, for Michigan, but I hope either one of Michigan or Cincinnati gets the job done and faces off in the national title game. Yeah, I think the most interesting part to me is all season long we were saying, who the hell can beat Georgia? Mm -hmm. Well, now that they lost it pretty easily, look, Bama hasn't played great all year. Y you should be going into this as any of these four teams thinking we can win it. Like, yep. that that should be the approach, whereas in the past, it was clear the Jalen Hurts OU team had no chance against LSU. It was clear uh, Ohio State that one year when the – Penn State argument when Penn State didn't get in, but Ohio mm -hmm. State did, that they had no chance against Clemson. Yep. I, you, there's no reason to, uh, to not think you have a chance if you're one of these four teams. Yes, I mean, Georgia looks uh, look beatable. They got beat yesterday. They got beat handily. It could have been a 30 or 40 point blowout. And Alabama lost to Texas A&M. And um, they had multiple chances to win that game, but they kept, it'd be almost like kept losing. I hate to say that's a kind of weird thing to say, but like whenever Alabama had a chance to win, Texas A&M came back and, and they got the win and they ended up going down and kicking the field goal as the game ended. So um, both both underdogs can win this game. Harrison, it's bad for the sport if you get both SEC teams winning by 30 points in yes. blowout fashion. I think that would be bad for the sport I because agree. the hope we just talked about, Michigan having hope, open it up that, hey, even if you're one of these superpowers in your conference, you can beat them every few years, and you can make the college football playoff yourself. That will go away uh, because you know we still have a chance when it comes to the playoff or the Power 5 thing. If uh, a group of five team gets in, oh, well, you just got beat 55 to 10 by Alabama. Eh, we're not going to get in ever again now. Yeah, no doubt about that. We'll run through a few Super Chats. By the way, coming up, I'm going to hop off. James is going to stay live on the Michigan Football Report. So use hashtag Michigan. Get those questions in. He'll answer all of your questions. Plus, he'll take a deeper dive into that matchup against yep. Georgia. Yep. What's your thoughts on Caleb Williams? Uh, I hope he stays at Oklahoma. I, I, I like the transfer portal, but I don't think it was built. Uh, for uh, him to follow his coach to USC. I don't think that was the purpose of it. Uh, I'd like to see him stay in Norman. And my thoughts on him as a player is bright future, strong arm, mobile. I mean, he's got all the tools to be a, uh, a hell of a quarterback uh, for the next few years and then uh, be a high draft pick. Yeah, with the offensive coordinator, by the way, they're bringing over. I mean, he's got a system that could really translate. Just, just like with uh, Lincoln yeah. Riley had that will yeah, translate and put up big numbers. Yeah, no doubt about it. Tom Downey's burner account. Uh, Army or Navy, who you got? Go Army. Army's been a much better team this year. Mm -hmm. uh, Navy, I think, is three and eight. So uh, I will, uh, I'll pick Army in that one. Uh, appreciate all your super chats. Uh, up to sixty bucks today. So you mm -hmm. guys are the best. Greg says uh, this: Who would win if Ohio State played Cincy? Proof the system does not put in the best fourteen. How is it proof? You're, at, I don't know if Ohio State would be Cincinnati. 
How about this? Would Ohio State or Notre Dame win? And if you have to pause, then Cincinnati could beat Ohio State because Cincinnati beat Notre Dame by two touchdowns mm -hmm. this year. Yeah, one other to talk about. One, uh, Greg, come on, Ty, bro, in that profile picture. It's, it's got a cop. I think it might be a cop. Th thank you for the Super Chat. Just joking right there, but he's clearly an Ohio <laughs> State guy, so I had to give him a little bit of uh, guff. Thanks for the Super Chat. But um, I don't know, right? So we'll find out against Alabama. Um, but would Cincinnati lose to Oregon if they played tomorrow? No. Who would you face? So that oh. you know, throws back that, that line of thinking. It's a good question. Uh, but with with two losses from Ohio State, I just don't think there could be that great of an argument that they yeah, should be in. They, they should not have been in. I mean, uh, they shouldn't be number five, frankly. Or si they're six, oh, but they six, yeah. they should yeah. Baylor should be in number six. Uh, Razik says, uh, forget the playoff. The Jets are winning the Super Bowl. Not this year. <laughs> they're uh, they're basically already eliminated. Uh, weird super chat, uh, but we appreciate it. Uh, Miss C. Melson says. My Alabama roll tide always number one to me. Roll tide all day, every. Well, yeah, your your favorite team is always number one to you. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's how it should but, be. But for favorite. Alabama fans, they're just they're, they're basically just number one number pretty one. much every year. <laughs> Fourteen straight seasons, I think it is, or twelve that Alabama has been number one at some point in the season, which is kind of crazy to think about. Speaking of that, Miss C. Nel Melson's favorite team is Bama. What is your favorite team? Shout it out in the chat. Uh, Get it going. Get the live chat going, both on the Michigan Football Report and on Chat Sports. I got a guy named Go Dogs just lighting up with some woof, woof, woof. Georgia, greatest team, greatest defense of all time. So the Georgia fans have come uh, come into the live chat here in the Michigan Football Report. Stick with us. We will do Michigan-Georgia preview coming up shortly, and we will also take your questions live. So use hash. Tag Michigan, but shout out your favorite teams. I got a go dogs from Convert. Uh, Tom, Tom, Tony V. Hutchinson is a man amongst boys, etc. Uh, Brad Forrester, I like. Dogs like to roll in their own poo. Spot the lie. Um, a lot of Michigan, the Michigan Georgia fight has started out in the Michigan Football Report live chat here. So uh, go dogs and some other uh, Alabama people are certainly. I'm sorry, Georgia people are certainly getting after it. All right, stay tuned. We're going to get to one more super chat, and then I'm going to hand this off to James Yoder for the next, you know, half hour, 45 minutes, as he will answer all of your questions. Again, hashtag Michigan, and uh, he will also break down Michigan's matchup against the Georgia Bulldogs. Ah. Greg, Notre Dame fan. Hope Michigan or Cincy wins it all, uh, but doubt it. Uh, thanks, boys. I, I apologize, Greg, for uh, for the shot in the tie. I assumed you're Ohio State fan, not a Notre Dame fan. You're an honorable, classy man, and uh, welcome to the show. Thank you for uh, your super chats and the uh, the questions. Hope Michigan and Cincy wins as well, and the SEC reign, and, and go from there. So let's do some shout outs, Harrison. You should watch the over there. Yeah, I got a few uh, shout outs. Uh, Eric says Purdue. I see a Michigan from uh, RC. Surely that's not the RC. Clayton says Boomer Sooners. Roll Tide. Uh, Dusty says Texas, Colorado Buffaloes. That's a loyal fan. Texas, that's also a loyal fan. Tennessee in the chat, go blue as well. Go BYU. Also, uh, Banga says go blue as well. Boiler up from Eric. So here's what's gonna happen. I'm signing off. I'm moving on. James Yoder is going to preview the Orange Bowl uh, between Michigan and Georgia. Also answer your questions. So use hashtag Michigan. Uh, we good to hand this off. All right, uh, hang on with us. I'll get a couple more shout-outs here. Uh, Thornton says BYU. Uh, Darius says uh, Roll Tide. I see uh, Wolverines as well. All right, I'm out of here. James is taking it over. It was fun as always, my man. And uh, Michigan fans, stay tuned because uh, a lot of Michigan fans. You're watching College Football Now. Harrison Graham and James Yoder with you as the College Football Playoff Committee has revealed their final four rankings. Subscribe to the channel because college football coverage is heating up here on Chat Sports. Let's react to it, James. Here's the top four as uh, the two matchups are set. The Alabama Crimson Tide jump to number one after their win over Georgia. Michigan stays at two. The Bulldogs fall to three. And then Cincinnati, the Bearcats, become the first group of five program to make the college football playoff. Notre Dame, Ohio State on the outside looking in as the final four is set. James, your initial reactions are what? Yeah, I mean, this is what we expected. So uh, a little bit of a bummer that Alabama won this game because it you know, took away from the drama. These shows are a little more fun when there's drama and people have the opportunity to argue. I do think, though, Michigan has a legitimate gripe for not being number one, but it's clear that the college football playoff committee wanted to avoid a rematch in the semifinal of a game we just saw. And so as such, it didn't really matter 
what happened in those games in a lot of ways. They were going to try and avoid a rematch, so Michigan could have won 75 to nothing. They probably still would have been number two in these rankings to avoid a CFP semifinal matchup between Alabama and Georgia. Now, it does line up for potential all-SEC national title game, but maybe not. The crazy things have happened. Um, we've never gotten, Harrison, in the history of the college football playoff, we have never gotten two good games. One no. is always a blowout, and there's yep. usually one good game, one blowout, but there's been quite a few years where they've been both blowouts. So maybe this is the uh, the year we get two good games. I'm not sure. Alabama-Cincinnati, that feels like a mismatch to me considering what we saw yesterday uh, out of Alabama. But Cincinnati, you know, they've got a good coach. They've got a good program. They're in the top four for a reason. They've got been on a five-year run that's, that's yeah. wildly impressive for a, a group of five team. Yeah, no doubt about that. So who you got? Who's won in the national championship the final four is set. This will be the pen comment, by the way. If you think it's the Crimson Tide, type Bama. If you think it's Georgia, type UGA. Maybe they get their rematch. If you think it's the Michigan Wolverines, type M-I-C-H. If you think it's the Cincinnati Bearcats, uh, type C-I-N. This will be the pen comment on today's video. So if you get hit with the YouTube ad break, scroll on down and either pick Bama, Georgia, Michigan, or Cincinnati. So the stage is set here. Bama will face Cincinnati. Michigan will face Georgia. And we should mention, James, that the sites have been chosen as well. Alabama has chosen the Cotton Bowl. They will play at Jerry World in Arlington, uh, Texas on New Year's Eve. The Michigan Wolverines will face Georgia in the Orange Bowl on New Year's Eve as well. Let's talk about the Cotton Bowl first. Uh, if I had to guess, as we're filming this, we don't quite know yet, that this will probably be the afternoon game because uh, Georgia, Michigan, probably a bigger draw nationally. That'll probably be the prime time game. Bama, Cincinnati. Be very interested to see, A, what the point spread is, mm -hmm. and B, can Cincinnati represent the group of five well? Because if Cincinnati gets blown out, as long as there's a four-team playoff system, you got to think it's going to be hard for a committee to give another group of five team a chance if they get blown out, even though there have been blowouts every single year in the college football playoff. You know, it's kind of like um, the Big 12. When Oklahoma goes in the last few years, they get blown out. It does hurt the reputation of the conference. Sure. They don't get the uh, the benefit of the doubt. Half with the Big 10, back-to-back -back years 15 and 16. Uh, the Big 10 got shut out two two years, uh, Michigan yep. State to Alabama, and then Clemson shut out Ohio State in those years. And so the Big Ten had a reputation stain for a few years until Ohio State got back into it and then, of course, beat Clemson last year. This seems like it to be, uh, I would say, I, I, mean, I guess it was a 14 to 17 point spread, honestly, Harrison. Like, yeah. It's going to be a pro probably Spe a pretty big one. Um, and I don't know where uh, it's going to be a shootout. I, I think Cincinnati has been a defensive struggle team, but I don't think they've got enough defense to shut down Alabama in any way. So if they're, I should say, if they're going to win the game, or have a chance, I think it's one of these ones where the winning team is going to have over 40 points either way. And so uh, Cincinnati is going to have to muster some more offense. Uh, you know, they're not just going to be able to shut down and, and hold you know, Alabama. Cincinnati is almost points. averaging 40 points a game. It's not like they can't score, mm -hmm. but uh, this will obviously be their stiffest competition yet. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Uh, one thing going against Alabama, John Mechie is – Expected to be out, out for the year. It sounds like he tore his ACL in that SEC championship game. So that's one less weapon the Bearcats would have to worry about. Uh, but, uh, look, it's going to be a tall order. I think out of the three other teams, this is probably the worst matchup for Cincinnati with how much speed uh, Bama has on offense and with their quarterback, Bryce Young. So the Bearcats will face uh, the Alabama Crimson Tide in the college football playoff semifinal matchup. And uh, we are getting the point spreads in. Uh, we're going to get those updated for you guys just verbally real quickly. Bama, 14-point favorites. I thought it might be a little bit higher. We'll see how that line shifts over the next uh, few weeks leading up to that game. So who you got in this one? Type A for Alabama. Type C for Cincinnati. Look, it's, I'm going to pick Alabama, but I hope Cincinnati at least uh, puts up a competitive fight. I'm calling my shot here, <laughs> Cincinnati. All right. They're going to win. Um, right. Luke Fickle, that, that defensive prowess, uh, he's, he's been part of a team. He was the defensive coordinator of an Ohio State team that beat Alabama. And I'm going back back in the day, Harrison, when you were just a young whippersnapper, Heisman Trophy winners always lost their bowl game. It was oh, like, yeah. a, like a 15 like year the stretch curse. in the 90s, or early 2000s, something like that. Like 14 to 15 years, the Heisman Trophy winner yep. lost the bowl game. And especially if a Heisman Trophy winner got in the national title game, the old BCS, et cetera, before the CFP got, yep. it was always a guarantee they were going to lose. Guaranteed. I'm going back. What's old is new. Michigan's beating Ohio State. Uh, and I'm bringing this curse back to pulling it forward out of the, the, you know, the 1990s in 
to the 2020, 20, yeah, 2020s, I guess it Listen, is. Listen, I'd love to see Cincinnati win. I'd also love if you guys subscribe to us here at Chat Sports because our college football coverage, it ain't going anywhere because your guys are enjoying our videos, so we'll keep cranking them out for you guys. Hit that subscribe button, more college uh, coaching hot boards. We'll have more specific previews of these matchups in the days to come as well, uh, so stay tuned for that. Recruiting is heating up. Uh, college football is red hot right now, and uh, you guys are enjoying it. So if you want more videos around college football, hit that subscribe button. It's youtube.com slash chat sports TV. Okay, let's talk about the other matchup, James. Uh, uh, if you're watching live, we're still live on the Michigan Football Report as well. The Wolverines get the Georgia Bulldogs, which obviously, you know, that's not what you were hoping for because now, pretty good chance if you're Michigan, you'd have to go through uh, both the SEC Blue Bloods in Georgia and in Alabama. Mm -hmm. Look, I think Michigan can win this game, Harrison. I think they uh, match up well against Georgia. I'm glad they're playing Georgia in the semifinal versus Alabama because, look, Alabama has a higher potent offense. I think uh, when game planned right, a higher potent offense potentially was what, what's going to beat Michigan. But also Nick Saban, when he has time to prepare for a game, he's just unbelievable when he does that, you know, when yeah. he has time to prepare for uh, almost any game, uh, opening season games, college world playoff semifinals. So we'll see – if Michigan can overcome Georgia, they are not um, an offense that I'm scared of. They've got a running game that can make an impact, but it's not a running game that Michigan hasn't uh, seen. Uh, clearly, uh, Michigan State had a hell of a game running the game against Michigan, but they have really cleaned up all of their uh, deficiencies when it uh, comes to giving up yards on the ground. Now, a running quarterback can still hurt them, but that's not what Georgia has. And so Alabama not being Michigan's opponent, I think, really helps them. Uh, I think that seven and a half points spread is is unfair to Michigan fans. I think it should be more like a three or four one. Yeah, seven and a half point favorites for Georgia. That's that's pretty interesting. Is the early line there? I thought it'd be like four or five, maybe. Uh, I think that's disrespectful to how consistent Michigan has been all year. And uh, I watched Georgia get bulldozed yesterday. There's no reason why Michigan doesn't at least have a good chance in that game. Now, should Georgia probably be a slight favorite? Yeah, I'd say mm -hmm. so, but. I don't think it should be an overwhelming favorite in the light in the slightest. So that will be the Orange Bowl in that college football playoff semifinal game down in Miami Garden. Seven and a half point is what the early uh, spread is. Georgia favorite yep. over Michigan. Over under. It's an NFL uh, bad NFL team. Over under forty three Yikes. and a half points. Uh, which is funny enough, that's right around the same that the Big Ten Championship game was yesterday. They slightly went over it. I think they beat it by a point and a half, 45 four total points, 43 and a half points was the over-under. So let me know who you got watching on Chat Sports or watching on the Michigan Football Report. Type M for Michigan, type G for Georgia. Harrison, put, put everything's on the table here. Whatever you say here, you're going to get ridiculed if you're right and, and champion, or ridiculed if you're wrong, championed if you're right, mostly by me. So let me know. I actually... I kind of think Michigan has a good chance in this game. I think these teams are built similarly. Stetson Bennett is awful against pressure, mm -hmm. and Michigan has the best two-man pass rush in the country with Hutchinson mm -hmm. and Ajabo. If they get consistent pressure, I think Michigan wins this game. I think this game, James, will be won in the trenches. Whichever offensive and defensive line performs better in this game will win this game. That was true in the SEC title game. Alabama held up. Georgia did not. Uh, so – I might pick Michigan here, man. I'm going to have to think about this more. Uh, but uh, my early prediction is Michigan grinds one out over Georgia, something like 20 to 17, 23 to 20. I think it'll be one of those type of games. I think the 43 and a half feels right for the over under. Uh, but uh, we'll see how it plays out. Early prediction, or are you saving that? Uh, no, you saving I'll that? keep it early prediction right now. I'll go Michigan. Uh 35-21, Georgia. Uh, early, wow. early word, this isn't official yet, so if this changes when, when you watch this later, uh, we're reporting this live, is that Michigan will indeed, Michigan-Georgia, be the primetime game. I just saw that Michigan's being told they'll be the primetime game. We'll see what happens. If you want to go bet on these matchups, you can do it with BetUS. I'm sure uh, these games are already up uh, on BetUS, so go to chatsports.com slash bet. Use our promo code CHAT125. You put down 100 bucks, you get 125 for free. Betting on bowl games is fun. It makes some of the smaller bowls more interesting as well. Once those bowls are announced, uh, those will be available to bet on as well. Chatsports.com slash bet. Use our promo code chat125. Go make some money throughout bowl season. To, so to circle, circle back, excuse me, to the final four, it's set. Alabama one, Michigan two, Georgia three, Cincinnati four in the college football playoff.
You're watching college football now. Harrison Graham and James Yoder with you as the college football playoff committee has revealed their final four rankings. Subscribe to the channel because college football coverage is heating up here on Chat Sports. Let's react to it, James. Here's the top four as uh, the two matchups are set. The Alabama Crimson Tide jump to number one after their win over Georgia. Michigan stays at two. The Bulldogs fall to three. And then Cincinnati, the Bearcats, become the first group of five program to make the college football playoff. Notre Dame, Ohio State on the outside looking in as the final four is set. James, your initial reactions are what? Yeah, I mean, this is what we expected. So uh, a little bit of a bummer that Alabama won this game because it you know, took away from the drama. These shows are a little more fun where there's drama and people have the opportunity to argue. I do think, though, Michigan has a legitimate gripe for not being number one, but it's clear that the college football playoff committee wanted to avoid a rematch in the semifinal of a game we just saw. And so as such, it didn't really matter uh, what happened in those games in a lot of ways. They were going to try and avoid a rematch. So Michigan could have won 75 to nothing. They probably still would have been number two in these rankings to avoid a CFP semifinal matchup between Alabama and Georgia. Now, it does line up for potential all SEC national title game, but maybe not. The crazy things have happened. Um, we've never gotten Harrison in the history of the college football playoff. We have never gotten two good games. One no. is always a blowout, and there's yep. usually one good game, one blowout. But there's been quite a few years where they've been both blowouts. So maybe this is the uh, the year we get two good games. I'm not sure. Alabama Cincinnati. That feels like a mismatch to me, considering what we saw yesterday uh, out of Alabama. But Cincinnati, you know, they've got a good coach. They've got a good program. They're in the top four for a reason. They've got a, been on a five-year run that's, that's yeah. wildly impressive for a, a group of five team. Yeah, no doubt about that. So who you got? Who's winning the national championship? The final four is set. This will be the pinned comment, by the way. If you think it's the Crimson Tide, type Bama. If you think it's Georgia, type UGA. Maybe they get their rematch. If you think it's the Michigan Wolverines, type M-I-C-H. If you think it's the Cincinnati Bearcats, uh, type C-I-N. This will be the pinned comment on today video so if you get hit with the YouTube ad break scroll on down and either pick Bama Georgia Michigan or Cincinnati so the stage is set here Bama will face Cincinnati Michigan will face Georgia and we should mention James that the sites have been chosen as well Alabama has chosen the Cotton Bowl. They will play at Jerry World in Arlington, uh, Texas on New Year's Eve. The Michigan Wolverines will face Georgia in the Orange Bowl on New Year's Eve as well. Let's talk about the Cotton Bowl first. Uh, if I had to guess, as we're filming this, we don't quite know yet, that this will probably be the afternoon game because uh, Georgia, Michigan, probably a bigger draw nationally. That'll probably be the prime time game. Bama, Cincinnati. Be very interested to see, A, what the point spread is, mm -hmm. and B, can Cincinnati represent the group of five well? Because if Cincinnati gets blown out, as long as there's a four-team playoff system, you got to think it's going to be hard for a committee to give another group of five team a chance if they get blown out, even though there have been blowouts every single year in the college football playoff. You know, it's kind of like um, the Big 12. When Oklahoma goes in the last few years, they get blown out. It does hurt the reputation of the conference. Sure. They don't get the uh, the benefit of the doubt. Happened with the Big 10, back-to-back -back years 15 and 16. Uh, the Big 10 got shut out two straight years, uh, Michigan yep. State to Alabama, and then Clemson shut out Ohio State in those years. And so the Big Ten had a reputation stain for a few years until Ohio State got back into it and then, of course, beat Clemson last year. This seems like it to be, uh, I would say, I, I, mean, I guess it was a 14 to 17 point spread, honestly, Harrison. Like, it's yeah. going to be a pro probably Spe a pretty big one. Um, and I don't know where uh, it's going to be a shootout. I, I think Cincinnati has been a defensive struggle team, but I don't think they've got enough defense to shut down Alabama in any way. So if they're, I was just say, if they're going to win the game, or have a chance, I think it's one of these ones where the winning team is going to have over 40 points either way. And so uh, Cincinnati is going to have to muster some more offense. Uh, you know, they're not just going to be able to shut down and, and hold you know, Alabama. Cincinnati is almost points. averaging 40 points a game. It's not like they can't score, mm -hmm. but uh, this will obviously be their stiffest competition yet. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Uh, one thing going against Alabama, John Mechie is – expected to be out, out for the year. It sounds like he tore his ACL in that SEC championship game. So that's one less weapon the Bearcats would have to worry about. Uh, but uh, look, it's going to be a tall order. I think out of the three other teams, this is probably the worst matchup for Cincinnati with how much speed uh, Bama has on offense and with their quarterback, Bryce Young. So the Bearcats will face 
uh, the Alabama Crimson Tide in the college football playoff semifinal matchup. And uh, we are getting the point spreads in. Uh, we're going to get those updated for you guys just verbally real quickly. Bama, 14-point favorites. I thought it might be a little bit higher. We'll see how that line shifts over the next uh, few weeks leading up to that game. So who you got in this one? Type A for Alabama. Type C for Cincinnati. Look, it's, I'm going to pick Alabama, but I hope Cincinnati at least uh, puts up a competitive fight. I'm calling my shot here. <laughs> Cincinnati. All right. They're going to win. Um, right. Luke Fickle, that, that defensive prowess, uh, he's, he's been part of a team. He was the defensive coordinator of an Ohio State team that beat Alabama. And I'm going back back in the day, Harrison, when you were just a young whippersnapper, Heisman Trophy winners always lost their bowl game. It was oh, like, yeah. a, like a 15 like year the stretch curse. in the 90s, or early 2000s, something like that. Like 14 to 15 years, the Heisman Trophy winner yep. lost the bowl game. And especially if a Heisman Trophy winner got in the national title game, the old BCS, et cetera, before the CFP got, yep. it was always a guarantee they were going to lose. Guaranteed. I'm going back. What's old is new. Michigan's beating Ohio State. Uh, and I'm bringing this curse back to pulling it forward out of the, the, you know, the 1990s into the 2020, 20, you know, 2020, I guess. It Listen, is. I'd love to see Cincinnati win it. I'd also love if you guys subscribe to us here at Chat Sports because our college football coverage, it ain't going anywhere because your guys are enjoying our videos. So we'll keep cranking them out for you guys. Hit that subscribe button. More college uh, coaching hot boards. We'll have more specific previews of these matchups in the days to come as well. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Recruiting is heating up. Uh, college football is red hot right now, and uh, you guys are enjoying it. So if you want more videos around college football, hit that subscribe button. It's youtube.com slash chat sports TV. Okay, let's talk about the other matchup, James. Uh, uh, if you're watching live, we're still live on the Michigan Football Report as well. The Wolverines get the Georgia Bulldogs, which obviously – you know, that's not what you were hoping for because now, pretty good chance if you're Michigan, you'd have to go through uh, both the SEC Blue Bloods in Georgia and in Alabama. Look, I think Michigan can win this game, Harrison. I think they uh, match up well against Georgia. I'm glad they're playing Georgia in the semifinal versus Alabama because, look, Alabama has a higher potent offense. I think uh, when game planned right, a higher potent offense potentially was what, what's going to beat Michigan. But also Nick Saban, when he has time to prepare for a game, he's just unbelievable when he does that. You know, when yeah. he has time to prepare for uh, almost any game, uh, opening season games, college world playoff semifinals. So we'll see if Michigan can overcome Georgia. They are not um, an offense that I'm scared of. They've got a running game that can make an impact, but it's not a running game that Michigan hasn't uh, seen. Uh, clearly, uh, Michigan State had a hell of a game running the game against Michigan, but they have really cleaned up all of their uh, – deficiencies when it uh, comes to giving up yards on the ground. Now, a running quarterback can still hurt them, but that's not what Georgia has. And so Alabama not being Michigan's opponent, I think, really helps them. Uh, I think that seven and a half points spread is is unfair to Michigan fans. I think it should be more like a three or four one. Yeah, seven and a half point favorites for Georgia. That's, that's pretty interesting as the early line there. I thought it'd be like four or five maybe. Uh, I think that's disrespectful to how consistent Michigan has been all year. And uh, I watched Georgia get bulldozed yesterday. There's no reason why Michigan doesn't at least have a good chance in that game. Now, should Georgia probably be a slight favorite? Yeah, I'd say mm -hmm. so. But I don't think it should be an overwhelming favorite in the light, in the slightest. So that will be the Orange Bowl in that college football playoff semifinal game down in Miami Garden. Seven and a half point is what the early uh, spread is. Georgia favorite yep. over Michigan. Over under, it's an NFL, uh, bad NFL team over under 43 Yikes. and a half points, uh, which is funny enough, that's right around the same that the Big Ten Championship game was yesterday. They slightly went over it. I think they beat it by a point and a half, 45 four total points, 43 and a half points was the over under. So let me know who you got watching on Chat Sports or watching on the Michigan Football Report. Type M for Michigan, type G for Georgia. Harrison, put, put everything's on the table here. Whatever you say here, you're going to get ridiculed if you're right and, and championed. Or ridiculed if you're wrong, championed if you're right, mostly by me. So let me know. I actually – I kind of think Michigan has a good chance in this game. I think these teams are built similarly. Stetson Bennett is awful against pressure, mm -hmm. and Michigan has the best two-man pass rush in the country with Hutchinson mm -hmm. and Ajabo. If they get consistent pressure, I think Michigan wins this game. I think this game, James, will be won in the trenches. Whichever offensive and defensive line performs better in this game – will win this game. That was true in the SEC title game. Alabama held up. Georgia did not. Uh, so 
I might pick Michigan here, man. I'm going to have to think about this more, uh, but uh, my early prediction is Michigan grinds one out over Georgia, something like 20 to 17, 23 to 20. I think it'll be one of those type of games. I think the 43 and a half feels right for the over under, uh, but uh, we'll see how it plays out. Early prediction, or are you saving that? Uh, no, I'll okay, that? keep it early prediction right now. I'll go Michigan. Uh, 35-21, Georgia. Uh, early, wow. early word, this isn't official yet, so if this changes when, when you watch this later, uh, we're reporting this live, is that Michigan will indeed, Michigan-Georgia, be the primetime game. I just saw that Michigan's being told they'll be the primetime game. We'll see what happens. If you want to go bet on these matchups, you can do it with BetUS. I'm sure uh, these games are already up uh, on BetUS, so go to chatsports.com slash bet. Use our promo code CHAT125. You put down 100 bucks, you get 125 for free. Betting on bowl games is fun. It makes some of the smaller bowls more interesting as well. Once those bowls are announced, uh, those will be available to bet on as well. Chatsports.com slash bet. Use our promo code chat125. Go make some money throughout bowl season. So to circle, circle back, excuse me, to the final four, it's set. Alabama one, Michigan two, Georgia three, Cincinnati four in the college football playoff. You're watching College Football Now. Harrison Graham and James Yoder with you as the College Football Playoff Committee has revealed their final four rankings. Subscribe to the channel because college football coverage is heating up here on Chat Sports. Let's react to it, James. Here's the top four as uh, the two matchups are set. The Alabama Crimson Tide jump to number one after their win over Georgia. Michigan stays at two. The Bulldogs fall to three. And then Cincinnati, the Bearcats, become the first group of five program to make the college football playoff. Notre Dame, Ohio State on the outside looking in as the final four is set. James, your initial reactions are what? Yeah, I mean, this is what we expected. So uh, a little bit of a bummer that Alabama won this game because it you know, took away from the drama. These shows are a little more fun where there's drama and people have the opportunity to argue. I do think, though, Michigan has a legitimate gripe for not being number one, but it's clear that the college football playoff committee wanted to avoid a rematch in the semifinal of a game we just saw. And so as such, it didn't really matter uh, what happened in those games in a lot of ways. They were going to try and avoid a rematch. So Michigan could have won 75 to nothing. They probably still would have been number two in these rankings to avoid a CFP semifinal matchup between Alabama and Georgia. Now, it does line up for potential all SEC national title game, but maybe not. The crazy things have happened. Um, we've never gotten Harrison in the history of the college football playoff. We have never gotten two good games. One no. is always a blowout, and there's yep. usually one good game, one blowout. But there's been quite a few years where they've been both blowouts. So maybe this is the uh, the year we get two good games. I'm not sure. Alabama Cincinnati. That feels like a mismatch to me, considering what we saw yesterday uh, out of Alabama. But Cincinnati, you know, they've got a good coach. They've got a good program. They're in the top four for a reason. They've got been on a five-year run that's, that's yeah. wildly impressive for a, a group of five team. Yeah, no doubt about that. So who you got? Who's winning the national championship? The final four is set. This will be the pinned comment, by the way. If you think it's the Crimson Tide, type Bama. If you think it's Georgia, type UGA. Maybe they get their rematch. If you think it's the Michigan Wolverines, type M-I-C-H. If you think it's the Cincinnati Bearcats, uh, type C-I-N. This will be the pinned comment on today video so if you get hit with the YouTube ad break scroll on down and either pick Bama Georgia Michigan or Cincinnati so the stage is set here Bama will face Cincinnati Michigan will face Georgia and we should mention James that the sites have been chosen as well Alabama has chosen the Cotton Bowl. They will play at Jerry World in Arlington, uh, Texas on New Year's Eve. The Michigan Wolverines will face Georgia in the Orange Bowl on New Year's Eve as well. Let's talk about the Cotton Bowl first. Uh, if I had to guess, as we're filming this, we don't quite know yet, that this will probably be the afternoon game because uh, Georgia, Michigan, probably a bigger draw nationally. That'll probably be the prime time game. Bama, Cincinnati. Be very interested to see, A, what the point spread is, mm -hmm. and B, can Cincinnati represent the group of five well? Because if Cincinnati gets blown out, as long as there's a four-team playoff system, you got to think it's going to be hard for a committee to give another group of five team a chance if they get blown out, even though there have been blowouts every single year in the college football playoff. You know, it's kind of like um, the Big 12. When Oklahoma goes in the last few years, they get blown out. It does hurt the reputation of the conference. Sure. They don't get the uh, the benefit of the doubt. Half with the Big 10, back-to-back -back years 15 and 16, uh, the Big 10 got 
shutout, two straight years, uh, Michigan yep. State to Alabama, and then Clemson shut out Ohio State in those years. And so the Big Ten had a reputation stain for a few years until Ohio State got back into it and then, of course, beat Clemson last year. This seems like it to be, uh, I would say, I, I, mean, I guess it was a 14 to 17 point spread, honestly, Harrison. Like, it's yeah. going to be a pro- probably Spe- a pretty big one. Um, and I don't know where uh, it's going to be a shootout. I, I think Cincinnati has been a defensive struggle team, but I don't think they've got enough defense to shut down Alabama in any way. So if they're, I was just saying, if they're going to win the game, have a chance, I think it's one of these ones where the winning team is going to have over 40 points either way. And so um, Cincinnati is going to have to muster some more offense. Uh, you know, they're not just going to be able to shut down and, and hold you know, Alabama. Cincinnati is almost points. averaging 40 points a game. It's not like they can't score, mm-hmm. but uh, this will obviously be their stiffest competition yet. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Uh, one thing going against Alabama, John Mechie is – expected to be out of, out for the year. It sounds like he tore his ACL in that SEC championship game. So that's one less weapon the Bearcats would have to worry about. Uh, but uh, look, it's going to be a tall order. I think out of the three other teams, this is probably the worst matchup for Cincinnati with how much speed uh, Bama has on offense and with their quarterback, Bryce Young. So the Bearcats will face uh, the Alabama Crimson Tide in the college football playoff semifinal matchup. And uh, we are getting the point spreads in. Uh, We're going to get those updated for you guys just verbally real quickly. Bama, 14-point favorites. I thought it might be a little bit higher. We'll see how that line shifts over the next uh, few weeks leading up to that game. So who you got in this one? Type A for Alabama. Type C for Cincinnati. Look, I'm going to pick Alabama, but I hope Cincinnati at least uh, puts up a competitive fight. I'm calling my shot here. Cincinnati. All right. They're going to win. Um, right. Luke Fickle, that, that defensive prowess, uh, he's, he's been part of a team. He was the defensive coordinator of an Ohio State team that beat Alabama. And I'm going back back in the day, Harrison, when you were just a young whippersnapper, Heisman Trophy winners always lost their bowl game. It was oh, like, yeah. a, like a 15 like year the stretch curse. in the 90s, or early 2000s, something like that. Like 14 to 15 years, the Heisman Trophy winner yep. lost the bowl game. And especially if a Heisman Trophy winner got in the national title game, the old BCS, et cetera, before the CFP got, yep. it was always a guarantee they were going to lose. Guaranteed. I'm going back. What's old is new. Michigan's beating Ohio State. Uh, and I'm bringing this curse back to pulling it forward out of the, ni- the, you know, the 1990s into the 2020, 20, you know, 2020 is, I guess it Listen, is. Listen, I'd love to see Cincinnati win it. I'd also love if you guys subscribe to us here at Chat Sports because our college football coverage, it ain't going anywhere because your guys are enjoying our videos. So we'll keep cranking them out for you guys. Hit that subscribe button. More college uh, coaching hot boards. We'll have more specific previews of these matchups in the days to come as well. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Recruiting is heating up. Uh, college football is red hot right now and uh, you guys are enjoying it. So if you want more videos around college football, hit that subscribe button. It's youtube.com slash chat sports TV. Okay, let's talk about the other matchup, James. Uh, uh, If you're watching live, we're still live on the Michigan Football Report as well. The Wolverines get the Georgia Bulldogs, which obviously, you know, that's not what you were hoping for because now, pretty good chance if you're Michigan, you'd have to go through uh, both the SEC Blue Bloods in Georgia and in Alabama. Look, I think Michigan can win this game, Harrison. I think they uh, match up well against Georgia. I'm glad they're playing George in the semifinal versus Alabama because, look, Alabama has a higher potent offense. I think uh, when game planned right, a higher potent offense potentially was what, what's going to beat Michigan. But also Nick Saban, when he has time to prepare for a game, he's just unbelievable when he does that. You know, when yeah. he has time to prepare for uh, almost any game, uh, opening season games, college world playoff semifinals. So we'll see if Michigan can overcome Georgia. They are not um, – an offense that I'm scared of. They've got a running game that can make an impact, but it's not a running game that Michigan hasn't uh, seen. Uh, clearly, uh, Michigan State had a hell of a game running the game against Michigan, but they have really cleaned up all of their uh, deficiencies when it uh, comes to giving up yards on the ground. Now, a running quarterback can still hurt them, but that's not what Georgia has. And so Alabama not being Michigan's opponent, I think, really helps them. Uh, I think that seven and a half points spread is is – Unfair to Michigan fans. I think it should be more like a three or four one. Yeah, seven and a half point favorites for Georgia. That's that's pretty interesting as the early line there. I thought it'd be like four or five maybe. Uh, I think that's disrespectful to how consistent Michigan has been all year. And uh, 
I watched Georgia get bulldozed yesterday. There's no reason why Michigan doesn't at least have a good chance in that game. Now, should Georgia probably be a slight favorite? Yeah, I'd say mm -hmm. so. But I don't think it should be an overwhelming favorite in the, li in the slightest. So that will be the Orange Bowl in that college football playoff semifinal game down in Miami Garden. Seven and a half point is what the early uh, spread is. Georgia favorite yep. over Michigan. Over under, it's an NFL, uh, bad NFL team over under 43 Yikes. and a half points. Uh, which is funny enough, that's right around the same that the Big Ten Championship game was yesterday. They slightly went over it. I think they beat it by a point and a half, 45 four total points, 43 and a half points was the over-under. So let me know who you got watching on Chat Sports or watching on the Michigan Football Report. Type M for Michigan, type G for Georgia. Harrison, put, put everything's on the table here. Whatever you say here, you're going to get ridiculed if you're right and, and championed, or ridiculed if you're wrong, championed if you're right, mostly by me. So let me know. I actually... I kind of think Michigan has a good chance in this game. I think these teams are built similarly. Stetson Bennett is awful against pressure, mm -hmm. and Michigan has the best two-man pass rush in the country with Hutchinson mm -hmm. and Ajabo. If they get consistent pressure, I think Michigan wins this game. I think this game, James, will be won in the trenches. Whichever offensive and defensive line performs better in this game will win this game. That was true in the SEC title game. Alabama held up. Georgia did not. Uh, so – I might pick Michigan here, man. I'm going to have to think about this more. Uh, but uh, my early prediction is Michigan grinds one out over Georgia, something like 20 to 17, 23 to 20. I think it'll be one of those type of games. I think the 43 and a half feels right for the over under. Uh, but uh, we'll see how it plays out. Early prediction, or are you saving that? Uh, no, you saving I'll, that? I'll keep it early prediction right now. I'll go Michigan. Uh 35-21, Georgia. Uh, early wow. early word, this isn't official yet, so if this changes when, when you watch this later, uh, we're reporting this live, is that Michigan will indeed, Michigan-Georgia, be the primetime game. I just saw that Michigan's being told to be the primetime game. So we'll see what happens. If you want to go bet on these matchups, you can do it with BetUS. I'm sure uh, these games are already up uh, on BetUS, so go to chatsports.com slash bet. Use our promo code CHAT125. You put down 100 bucks, you get 125 for free. Betting on bowl games is fun. It makes some of the smaller bowls more interesting as well. Once those bowls are announced, uh, those will be available to bet on as well. Chatsports.com slash bet. Use our promo code CHAT125. Go make some money throughout bowl season. To, so to cir circle back, excuse me, to the final four, it's set. Alabama 1, Michigan 2, Georgia 3, Cincinnati 4 in the college football playoff. You're watching College Football Now. Harrison Graham and James Yoder with you as the College Football Playoff Committee has revealed their final four rankings. Subscribe to the channel because college football coverage is heating up here on Chat Sports. Let's react to it, James. Here's the top four as uh, the two matchups are set. The Alabama Crimson Tide jump to number one after their win over Georgia. Michigan stays at two. The Bulldogs fall to three. And then Cincinnati, the Bearcats, become the first group of five program to make the college football playoff. Notre Dame, Ohio State on the outside looking in as the final four is set. James, your initial reactions are what? Yeah, I mean, this is what we expected. So uh, a little bit of a bummer that Alabama won this game because it you know, took away from the drama. These shows are a little more fun where there's drama and people have the opportunity to argue. I do think, though, Michigan has a legitimate gripe for not being number one, but it's clear that the college football playoff committee wanted to avoid a rematch in the semifinal of a game we just saw. And so as such, it didn't really matter uh, what happened in those games in a lot of ways. They were going to try and avoid a rematch. So Michigan could have won 75 nothing. They probably still would have been number two in these rankings to avoid a CFP semifinal matchup between Alabama and Georgia. Now, it does line up for potential all SEC national title game, but maybe not. The crazy things have happened. Um, we've never gotten Harrison in the history of the college football playoff. We have never gotten two good games. One no. is always a blowout, and there's yep. usually one good game, one blowout. But there's been quite a few years where they've been both blowouts. So maybe this is the uh, the year we get two good games. I'm not sure. Alabama Cincinnati. That feels like a mismatch to me, considering what we saw yesterday uh, out of Alabama. But Cincinnati, you know, they've got a good coach. They've got a good program. They're in the top four for a reason. They've got to been on a five-year run that's, that's yeah. wildly impressive for a, a group of five team. Yeah, no doubt about that. So who you got? Who's won in the national championship? The final four is set. This will be the pinned comment, by the way. If you think it's the Crimson Tide, type Bama. If you think it's Georgia, type UGA. Maybe they get their rematch. If you think it's the Michigan 
Michigan Wolverines type M-I-C-H. If you think it's the Cincinnati Bearcats uh, type C-I-N. This will be the pinned comment on today's video. So if you get hit with the YouTube ad break, scroll on down and either pick Bama, Georgia, Michigan, or Cincinnati. So the stage is set here. Bama will face Cincinnati. Michigan will face Georgia. And we should mention, James, that the sites have been chosen as well. Alabama has chosen the Cotton Bowl. They will play at Jerry World in Arlington, uh, Texas on New Year's Eve. The Michigan Wolverines will face Georgia in the Orange Bowl on New Year's Eve as well. Let's talk about the Cotton Bowl first. Uh, if I had to guess, as we're filming this, we don't quite know yet, that this will probably be the afternoon game because uh, Georgia, Michigan, probably a bigger draw nationally. That'll probably be the prime time game. Bama, Cincinnati. Be very interested to see, A, what the point spread is, mm -hmm. and B, can Cincinnati represent the group of five well? Because if Cincinnati gets blown out, as long as there's a four-team playoff system, you got to think it's going to be hard for a committee to give another group of five team a chance if they get blown out, even though there have been blowouts every single year in the college football playoff. You know, it's kind of like um, the Big 12. When Oklahoma goes in the last few years, they get blown out. It does hurt the reputation of the conference. Sure. They don't get the, uh, the benefit of the doubt. Half with the Big 10, back-to-back -back years 15 and 16. Uh, the Big 10 got shut out two straight years, uh, Michigan yep. State to Alabama, and then Clemson shut out Ohio State in those years. And so the Big Ten had a reputation stain for a few years until Ohio State got back into it and then, of course, beat Clemson last year. This seems like it to be, uh, I would say, I, I, mean, I guess it was a 14 to 17 point spread, honestly, Harrison. Like, yeah. It's going to be a pro probably Spe a pretty big one. Um, and I don't know where uh, it's going to be a shootout. I, I think Cincinnati has been a defensive struggle team but I don't think they've got enough defense to shut down Alabama in any way so if they're I should say this, if they're going to win the game they have a chance I think it's one of these ones where the winning team is going to have over 40 points either way and so um, Cincinnati is going to have to muster some more offense uh, you know they're not just going to be able to shut down and, and hold you know, Alabama Cincinnati's almost points. averaging 40 points a game it's not like they can't score mm -hmm. but uh, this will obviously be their stiffest competition yet I mean there's no doubt about that uh, one thing going against Alabama, John Mechie is expected to be out, of, out for the year. It sounds like he tore his ACL in that SEC championship game, so that's one less weapon the Bearcats would have to worry about. Uh, but, uh, look, it's going to be a tall order. I think out of the three other teams, this is probably the worst matchup for Cincinnati with how much speed uh, Bama has on offense and with their quarterback, Bryce Young. So the Bearcats will face uh, the Alabama Crimson Tide in the college football playoff semifinal matchup. And uh, we are getting the point spreads in. Uh, we're going to get those updated for you guys just verbally real quickly. Bama, 14-point favorites. I thought it might be a little bit higher. We'll see how that line shifts over the next uh, few weeks leading up to that game. So who you got in this one? Type A for Alabama, type C for Cincinnati. Look, it's, I'm going to pick Alabama, but I hope Cincinnati at least uh, puts up a competitive fight. I'm calling my shot here. Cincinnati. All right. They're going to win. Um, right. Luke Fickle, that, that defensive prowess, uh, he's, he's been part of a team. He was the defensive coordinator of an Ohio State team that beat Alabama. And I'm going back back in the day, Harrison, when you were just a young whippersnapper, Heisman Trophy winners always lost their bowl game. There was oh, like, yeah. a, like a 15 like year the stretch curse. in the 90s, or early 2000s, something like that. Like 14 or 15 years, the Heisman Trophy winner yep. lost the bowl game. And especially if a Heisman Trophy winner got in the national title game, the old BCS, et cetera, before the CFP got yep. on, it was always a guarantee they were going to lose. Guaranteed. I'm going back. What's old is new. Michigan's beating Ohio State. Uh, and I'm bringing this curse back to pulling it forward out of the, the, you know, the 1990s in to the 2020, 20, you know, 2020s, I guess it Listen, is. Listen, I'd love to see Cincinnati win it. I'd also love if you guys subscribe to us here at Chat Sports because our college football coverage, it ain't going anywhere because your guys are enjoying our videos, so we'll keep cranking them out for you guys. Hit that subscribe button, more college uh, coaching hot boards. We'll have more specific previews of these matchups in the days to come as well, uh, so stay tuned for that. Recruiting is heating up. Uh, college football is red hot right now, and uh, you guys are enjoying it. So if you want more videos around college, college football hit that subscribe button it's youtube.com slash chat sports tv okay let's talk about the other matchup james uh uh if you're watching live we're still live on the michigan football report as well the wolverines get the georgia bulldogs which obviously you know that's not what you are hoping for because now pretty good chance if you're michigan you'd have to go through uh both the sec blue bloods in georgia and in alabama mm -hmm. Look, I think Michigan can win this game, Harrison. I think they uh, match up well against Georgia. I'm glad they're playing 
George in the semifinal versus Alabama because, look, Alabama has a higher potent offense. I think uh, when game planned right, a higher potent offense potentially was what, what's going to beat Michigan. But also Nick Saban, when he has time to prepare for a game, he's just unbelievable when he does that. You know, when yeah. he has time to prepare for uh, – almost any game, uh, opening season games, college world playoff semifinals. So we'll see if Michigan can overcome Georgia. They are not um, an offense that I'm scared of. They've got a running game that can make an impact, but it's not a running game that Michigan hasn't uh, seen. Uh, clearly, uh, Michigan State had a hell of a game running the game against Michigan, but they have really cleaned up all of their uh, deficiencies when it uh, comes to giving up yards on the ground. Now, a running quarterback can still hurt them, but that's not what Georgia has. And so Alabama not being Michigan's opponent, I think, really helps them. Uh, I think that seven and a half points spread is is unfair to Michigan fans. I think it should be more like a three or four one. Yeah, seven and a half point favorites for Georgia. That's that's pretty interesting as the early line there. I thought it'd be like four or five maybe. Uh, I think that's disrespectful to how consistent Michigan has been all year. And uh, I watched Georgia get bulldozed yesterday. There's no reason why Michigan doesn't at least have a good chance in that game. Now, should Georgia probably be a slight favorite? Yeah, I'd say mm. so. But I don't think it should be an overwhelming favorite in the li in the slightest. So that will be the orange ball in that college football playoff semifinal game down in Miami Garden. Seven and a half point is what the early uh, spread is. Georgia favorite yep. over Michigan. Over under, it's an NFL, uh, bad NFL team over under 43 Yikes. and a half points, uh, which is funny enough, that's right around the same that the Big Ten Championship game was yesterday. They slightly went over it. I think they beat it by a point and a half, 45 four total points, 43 and a half points was the over under. So let me know who you got watching on Chat Sports or watching on the Michigan Football Report. Type M for Michigan, type G for Georgia. Harrison, put, put everything's on the table here. Whatever you say here, you're going to get ridiculed if you're right and, and championed or ridiculed if you're wrong, championed if you're right, mostly by me. So let me know. I actually – I kind of think Michigan has a good chance in this game. I think these teams are built similarly. Stetson Bennett is awful against pressure, mm -hmm. and Michigan has the best two-man pass rush in the country with Hutchinson mm -hmm. and Ajabo. If they get consistent pressure, I think Michigan wins this game. I think this game, James, will be won in the trenches. Whichever offensive and defensive line performs better in this game – will win this game. That was true in the SEC title game. Alabama held up. Georgia did not. Uh, so I might pick Michigan here, man. I'm going to have to think about this more. Uh, but uh, my early prediction is Michigan grinds one out over Georgia, something like 20 to 17, 23 to 20. I think it'll be one of those type of games. I think the 43 and a half feels right for the over under. Uh, but uh, we'll see how it plays out. Early prediction or are you saving that? Uh, no, you I'll, saving I'll that? keep it. Early prediction right now, I'll go Michigan uh, – 35-21, Georgia. Uh, early wow. early word, this isn't official yet, so if this changes when, when you watch this later, uh, we're reporting this live, is that Michigan will indeed, Michigan-Georgia, be the primetime game. I just saw that Michigan's being told they'll be the primetime game. We'll see what happens. If you want to go bet on these matchups, you can do it with BetUS. I'm sure uh, these games are already up uh, on BetUS, so go to chatsports.com slash bet. Use our promo code CHAT125. You put down 100 bucks, you get 125 for free. Betting on bowl games is fun. It makes some of the smaller bowls more interesting as well. Once those bowls are announced, uh, those will be available to bet on as well. Chatsports.com slash bet. Use our promo code CHAT125. Go make some money throughout bowl season. To, so to cir circle back, excuse me, to the final four, it's set. Alabama 1, Michigan 2, Georgia 3, Cincinnati 4 in the college.